You are watching Leicester Till I Die TV. Good evening, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good night, goodbye. Hiya, wherever you are in the world. Welcome along. This is LTID TV from Less Little I Die. Thank you for joining us. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, uh, please join in the comments, but do do keep them um, as clean, unless, of course, you're talking about leads. Uh, and if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, thank you very much for lending us, you ear, lending us your ears, even. Uh, I am so excited, and I just can't hide it, as the Pointer Sisters once said. But yes, wherever you are in the world, um, welcome along. Um, <laughs> well, it, this is a roller coaster of the season, isn't it? Um, but I have just got this to to, to bring to bring everybody's attention. <laughs> Yeah, apparently um, Warburton's have announced uh, that they are shipping extra supplies of bread up to uh, Yorkshire just in case they run out of Hovis to cry into. So that's all right for you, Leeds fans. You're not going to run out of <laughs> bread. <laughs> oh, I shall I be in horrible, uh, Brad? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, just hello. And no, Chris, because there were certain Leeds fans, even friends of ours, Leeds fans, that messaged on here last night. They messaged us directly saying, hey, you bottled it, you bottled it. Pot calling, fucking kettle, you bottled job kings. <laughs> Who put the ball in Leeds' net? Who put the ball in Leeds' net? Who put the ball in Leeds' net? Blackburn fucking Rovers. Yes, indeed. It's all gone quiet over there. Go on, it's <laughs> all gone quiet over there. I wonder how many Leeds fans we'll have coming on the chat today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that many. You see? 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 Zero. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And... They're assholes as well. No, in oh, fairness, yeah. we do have some nice Leeds fans. We do. Um, they might be coming on to say, see, told you we bought Because there were some that were genuinely nervous given their form. Yes. I mean, yes, they were. Um, it's and funny, look, isn't it? you know, it's, it's, it's okay coming on and saying, hey, we're top, you know, we're, we're like you or whatever. But it's the constant, the fact that you're having to go on to other chats because maybe your own aren't that good. I don't know. Um, and you know, I was watching one Leeds one earlier uh, because I clicked on it by accident. And he's there and he's smoking on the channel. And I'm like, really? Um, but look, I just think um, have just have some humility, you know. And we're, the only reason we're like we are, and I know this is very difficult for some of the Leeds, some of the Leeds fans to understand, is that we're taking the piss out of you. Because of how you were to us, top for one game by one goal, and you'd think they'd, you know, well they did have the open top bus out, didn't they? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Luke is in. Good morning over there, Luke, isn't it? Feel like this? Oh no, good evening. Uh, feel like this show is going to be like attending a wake. It's not actually because of that. Because of that, can you see it? Um, and Kyle is in. Hi, Chris. How are you doing, Kyle? In earlier was Terry and NBT three. Good evening or good afternoon. I'm, I'm going to say good evening and I'll just forget it because I'm used to doing evening shows. Good day, sir. Good day to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. I was actually, I'd 
got it on my um, on my phone, and I was sort of I had it, you know, up, score updates up till half time. It was nil nil, and I thought, oh. And then I started to watch it for a little bit on on Sky, and I thought, I can't watch this. I was more nervous watching that game than I was watching ours yesterday. And then I thought, I can't do this. And I went off to sort of do some, some you know, pictures and what have you. And I had it just coming up. And then, of course, one nil off. And they said there was, was it five or six minutes extra uh, stoppage time to play? Honestly, if I'd got a dog, I would have taken it for a walk. Ironically, I was out on a walk and I was getting caught in a thunderstorm, but it was only the crowd sort of crying, not me who watched that result. In fact, I could, could say I was crying with laughter because, you know, at least we do our bragging and our joking when we've done something successful like beat Norwich, watch them draw, and we went top. I mean, mm. technically, because the game's going on, we are now second and Ipswich are ahead of us by a point. But did you hear that, Leeds fans? Second. Still second. You're not top, you're not second, you're in the playoffs. Just just save it. Always yeah. remember, don't put the cart ahead of the horse. No. By all means, be smug. By all means, have enjoyed us losing. But until you actually do something worthwhile, mm. the Rovers returns. Yeah, and you but got well. done. Hey, and you got done just as badly as we did against I, a struggling side down at the bottom. I, I, I used to work. Uh, I used, I I used to work for Blackburn Rovers. Always said they're a lovely club. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, hopefully, they're <laughs> from the last game of the season as well. Well, until then, yeah. Uh, Paul says, "Hi, everybody. Been on the Leeds watch along. Leeds fans want their manager gone. They're like the Leicester fans last night, disillusioned." Uh, Dara is in. Hi, Dara. How are you doing? He says hello. Um, Dara says Enzo got until next week to turn it around we're not, I'm not going to respond to that now because we're going to be obviously covering these points later Dara, what is the point of backing him now? <laughs> really? It will do, no, it, it, do nothing In fact, it no. leaves us in the worst position than when we sat Brendan because we clearly don't have the finances to go out and replace No um, and, and respect. that would leave us three games for the new manager coming in. And who would come in? Mm. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, anyway, we'll come on to that. We'll come on to that. I just want to leave that up there a little bit longer. Leeds United nil, Blackburn Rovers won for anybody who was, uh, you know, when I was a lad and I went uphill with my bread back, <laughs> which was actually filmed in Dorset. <laughs> Not in Yorkshire. Um, just thought I'd, a useless bit of information there, but not a lot of people know that, right? Um, shall we get on, Brad? Uh, let's, let's, mate. As much as I want to leave that up for the whole show, fuck it. I am gonna move on. I'm gonna move on. I lead fans. Um, so it was full time, Plymouth won Leicester nil. Uh, like I said before, we talk about um, Spurs being Spurs, and of course, they just got thumped by Newcastle. But Leicester have you know, introduced a new world called, a word called Leicestery, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Um, and this is kind of like the annoyance to cheering on a Leeds defeat because you just look at the situation we're in and you look at the opportunities Leicester have let pass in the last four days. Six points, Chris. Six points would put us seven points ahead of Leeds and all but secured as automatic promotion because they would have been seven points off us and they only have three games in to, you know to play this season so any more drop points would would absolutely end it for them and and obviously Leicester having that game in hand would be it so it was more disappointing and I think we were rightly more annoyed with the defeat to Plymouth than we were the defeat to Millwall because I think we kind of just expected them to shrug it off and go again. Mm. Uh, and uh, and get something from from the game. We know Plymouth are fighting for our lives. It seems like we're not the only team that can't handle teams down near the bottom at this point of the season. You know, Blackburn will fight. Uh, well, they're still they're still fighting for their lives with games to go. But you yeah. know what I mean. We've just we've just been charitable, both of us, to these sides, and it's so frustrating because it's like the bitterness of the sweet side to seeing a, a team choke it. Um, Against it, uh, you know, it, when, when when they play. So, uh, morning, Nate. Um, 
get 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 your bowl of cereal or your toast or whatever you have and and, and enjoy enjoy the um the mockery of Leeds over here while we get our revenge. But it was annoying, Chris. And 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 the thing is, I don't want to compare it too much, but it feels like teams have figured out the top three clubs. Um, you know, all right, Ipswich are playing now, but they're drawing, they're they're, they're not in front yet. Um, it's only 20 minutes gone, granted, but they're not in front. Leeds couldn't get a goal for the the what the second week running now. N- neither Leicester or Leeds have managed to score. It's which still haven't scored yet. So right now we're on for back to back league games where he, the team ain't score. And Blackburn were very similar to Plymouth, and it just worries me. It it worries me a little bit. Um, but then I think. Well, actually, do we actually now technically have the better better running of the two? Because mm. we're playing teams that will have to come out to us. They won't put 11 men behind the ball. Well, 10 men behind the ball and leave one up front. Uh, is this actually more ideal for Leicester? Because they're playing teams in the promotion hunt. Um, well, three out of four of them, aren't they? Blackburn being the obvious one we'll have to deal with. But that's the last game of the season. If we're not still secure the top two spot by then, then, then I'll worry about it. But you know what I mean, Chris? Maybe if you look at results we've got, Win-wise, that might be, you know, three out of four at home as well. You say Blackburn and Norwich were at home. Who knows? But, yeah, it it it, it, it still has its frustrations that we lost um, last and, and night. Let's have a look. I mean, we know we lost to Bristol City and they've gone on a good run since they beat us. So maybe losing to them wasn't, you know, as, as bad as we, we seem to think it was. It was like, oh, God, it was Bristol City. And I don't think they've lost since they beat us. Um, Millwall are currently winning at the moment. Um, they're, they're one nil ahead. Um, and Stick like we keep saying, I mean, Plymouth, they beat us one nil. Uh, you know, they, they, they and before that, they, they were unbeaten in three before that. So let's not get too depressed. And Saints are no... Sorry? Saints are two nil up. Chad Saints Adams is just good. Six yeah. points behind Leeds. They're coming for you. They're coming for you. Yeah, sure. Maybe you're United. worried about the wrong team, Leeds fans. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Um, but look, I, I, and, and oh, for God, you know, we, we wheel out the old cliches all the time, don't we? But, um, you know, there are no easy games. And when you're playing teams at the bottom, and I, I grant you, you know, on paper, there should be easy games. But as, you know, Brian Clough once said, you know, we have the better team on paper. Unfortunately, we played them on grass. Um, <laughs> it, it, I love Brian Clough. I miss him to bits. But um, it, it, it is it is true. Um, you know, these teams are fighting for their lives. Uh, but look, we're going to get on to the... Um, uh, um, Oh, Paul's just... Uh, hi, also, Chris, the music to the Hovish TV advert is Dvorak Sympathy number nine. You know your stuff. You know your stuff. Uh, Adele is in. Hello. Not the Adele. You see what I did there? Adele is in. Hello. Uh, oh, God. Keep up. <laughs> no, I caught up. I just tried to ignore it, but you, you went and explained it. And you know what they say about a joke if you have to explain it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, 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 I always... When we've done these in the past, I've always started with a thought for the game. Uh, I know your daddy's God, um, but I, I'm going to sort of come over all religious here. And we'll come on to it in more detail later because of the players that we're going to be looking at. But I've, I've put here, football is a team game and is not won or lost by just one player. Now, there was a lot of abuse coming towards one player last night and he had a shit game. Yeah. One nil Borough. No, Emmanuel Latte just take Latte length to score for Middlesbrough. Hey, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yeah. 
You see, we couldn't do that in the Premier League. We'd have to wait 10 minutes until it yeah, was we confirmed. We are top of leagues. We are top of leagues. <laughs> we are top hey, of leagues. What did we say earlier? <laughs> I know, but I'm allowed to do it now because one, one's secured in the bag. We're still automatic no matter what happens in that game. It's just funny to see it. This is true. But no, oh, look, what yeah. I was saying was that, yes, come on and criticise players. Uh, sometimes they deserve it. Uh, but one player, I mean, it's like, do you remember when Madison missed that penalty against Everton? Mm. Did he cost us the game? Or had we played for an, you know, 80 odd minutes other than that five minutes that, that he took for the penalty? You know, it's you know, it's not all down. You know, last time I, I, I watched, football wasn't like tennis, one versus one. Mm. No, exactly, mate. And, and this is the thing. And, and the thing is, right, I, I said to this backstage, and I'm I'm gonna air it out noise that I I have I play in a position that gets scrutinised the most when we make mistakes. Don't know if I've ever mentioned it on a channel. Could be a first here, but I, I, I play in goal. I used to be a goalkeeper. I know, no. I know, I know. I used to play in the Irish leagues. I know. Never mention it. Don't don't bring that up too much. But yes, way Cardiff a level that's cheered me up because I hate Millwall. Can I but, just you know, say? Can I just say? Well, I did. Believe it. I know, <laughs> I know. Shock horror, shock horrors are all around. But we talked about this, right? And it wasn't really picked up in the post matches. It hasn't been picked up really in any of the post matches, right? Because this is this is the joys or the dark side of football, depends how you want to look at it and word it. If a striker misses an opportunity. And, like, and I'm not going to talk about the particular player in question for this game. Like, Vardy missed them chances at Bristol. Mm. We rightfully come on here afterwards and talk about how he missed this chance, he missed that chance, missed a hat full, he was rubbish in front of goal and he didn't play well. Um, and then we kind of break down what else we didn't do well and why we didn't deserve to win. Because, again, it's not just because Vardy missed them four chances that we didn't beat Bristol. We weren't defensively strong enough to keep them at bay. We didn't do right things in the midfield at right times. But here's the thing, Chris. Harry Winks, on a few occasions in the last three or four games, has passed the ball to nobody, gave it away, put it out for a throw into the opposition. And, and we've sat there at the time and gone, oh, for God's sake, that was a waste of a pass. What was he passing there for? But we don't talk about it afterwards. And do you want to know why? Because it doesn't concede as a goal or in the positive light, and try and be positive here, it doesn't, it doesn't set up a goal. Hmm. You know, if it doesn't have a bearing on that, the outcome, either right there and then or overall, then we don't really remember it. We don't really bring it up. We kind of go, oh, yeah, well, he did make some bad passes, but it's not his fault that Daki didn't score or Vardy didn't score. Or, yeah, he may have given the ward away, but Faye should have made another tackle and stopped it going through to him anyway. So it's Faye's fault. You know, we, we blame the last person involved in the build-up. You know, if a goalkeeper kicks it out short uh, to a defender under pressure and the defender loses the ball, it's not the goalkeeper's fault for giving it short, it's the player's fault for not getting rid of the ball or giving it back to the goalkeeper and handling the situation. You know, you know what I mean, Chris? Yeah. Blaming a player or an individual is very circumstantial to what we expect them to do in the situation and how costly their mistake is. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, thank you very, very much, Gray. I really do appreciate that. Um, I don't think we will do, Gray, but if you get any Leeds fans coming in, the decent Leeds fans are welcome, but if you get any of the Leeds fans that just come in mouthing off, just kick them out for 24 hours. Um, uh, go to all the best, Nate. All the best, mate. Um, uh, yeah, ben, this, mate. We know you like to listen to us. <laughs> also, Coventry are losing to Birmingham. Yes, to Birmingham. yes yeah. Going to be an exciting afternoon. Um, cheers, mate. Yeah, I really, say, really do appreciate it. Right, so let's just, before we say... Yes, we will have a moan. And look, if you all I will say is, guys, if you're going to come in and have a go at a player, fine. You're entitled to your opinion. But don't go on and on and on and mention it in 10-odd posts or 5-odd posts. We saw one post, yes, and I don't put every post up, so I don't think I'm ignoring you. I just don't want to put the same post up four or five times because yeah. you bought the arse off me. So just move on. Just move on. Have your opinion. Say it. And then that's fine. But there is no I in team. Like you say, no one player costs us a game 
technically because if he makes a mistake, there should be 89 minutes when you can put it right. But let's go on to this game. Um, look at that lineup. I mean, you know, we said this, didn't we, before kickoff? I hadn't picked Dakar, and like I say, I don't want to turn this into a Dakar hunt at the moment. Um, but apart from that, I had actually got um two different when I picked my team, I'd got Cannon up front and I'd got um uh Doyle. Uh, 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 left back and can I just say talking about the strikers tomorrow night's uh, let's talk Leicester show uh, which is on at seven o'clock uh, if you are interested in that we will be talking and I can't get rid of what I want to get rid of um, where are we there we go yeah Enzo striker dilemma um, and that's tomorrow night at seven o'clock with Kate and Dave. I'm sure that could get just as lively as it did last night. So join us then. We'll be talking about it. But well, when you look at that, Brad, probably our strongest lineup apart from you know Dakar. Yeah, it's it's our strongest lineup. Right? The, the the biggest problem you have with that lineup is it's predictable where they're going to be on the pitch and how they're going to be asked to play, and that, and that's 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 the thing you have to say about this side the players on the pitch don't concern me i know some people have a a, a, a hate brigade out for dakar and that but they don't concern me in oh this is a you know i never look at our 11 chris and think oh well we've lost this game because this player's playing that player's playing why has he picked him mm -hmm. uh I ne I'd never sit there and think that, even if I don't think they're, they're particularly the greatest option out there. Like you said, could we have played JJ or Doyle, Potato, Potato? It would have made any difference, would it? Really? I don't think much difference. No. Uh, I mean, you could maybe make a case. It's easy to make a case for somebody who hasn't been playing to kind of go, well, Cannon might have made a difference. You don't know. He could have been worse for all we know. But there was no there's not a single player on there that I look at and think, well, this team's going to lose you know lose a game of football especially against Plymouth away yes yeah um, I don't so. want to go too much onto the team because I know that you're going to be touching on that uh, later um da Dara said this last night uh players mentality too many big time Charlies in the team uh, I don't think so much that is big time Charlie players out there because they are passionate about it. They are trying to do the right things. They're only doing and playing the way the managers instructed them to do. And they are trying for it. My biggest concern that I've been raising since, well, actually I've been raising since December, Chris, and I know people say, Oh, they shouldn't be like that, but it is a game that has no loyalty. Well, very rare. Do you see loyalty in it? But also, these players start to look after themselves at this point of the season. Yeah. And that is, should we really still be committing to players that aren't committed to us? Yes. Well, maybe that's why uh, um, Kalech is not, you know, first choice at the moment. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to say, do we have loyalty to the companies that we've worked for in the past? No. I I'll be loyal while they're paying me my wages. But once I know, I twice I actually, and I think I said this the other day, didn't I? I was in a position where my job was made redundant and I was put on so many weeks' notice, you know, leaving, what have you. Did I Did I give my all? Of course I didn't. Players aren't any different. They, they, they will do what they've got to do because they're getting paid. Yeah. Um, and, but, I'm, and I'm sure there's players out there like indeed you, I can just because he's in the middle of it, I can see who aren't going. You, there's a difference between not giving a hundred percent and mentally not giving a hundred percent. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting for any stretch of the imagination that people like Kalechi when they come on or they start games, or people like Indeedy when they get in a good run in the side, etc., aren't trying. They're not going out there to deliberately show they don't give a, no, a not. toss and no, they don't not. go wrong. No, and I, just, I would never have not gone out and not met and if it was a sales job not made calls or when customers walked into the shop just ignored them but well you you're do. only harming your own self aren't you exactly exactly uh ben by the way is, is a millwall fan welcome in ben can i just say um yep yeah, you beat us the other day you deserved it right i mean i know you know bill will take some stick and look when we do the the watch along part of the watch along is the post-match reaction and the word there 
the, the key word there is reaction. We are reacting to that straight after the final whistle. All right, well, we may go off for a piss first, but we're reacting that straight after the. This is the show where we're a little bit more, you know, we've calmed down a bit. We've had time yeah. to reflect. But it's a level. Oh, are they? Oh, bloody hell. Um, but well, at least they're level and not winning. Yeah, that's um, true. Uh, but Ben, I could say with that game, and I know you know, n- 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 <laughs> Millwall's not the most popular team in the league. Uh, I know, I know, um, Brad loves them, but no. In fairness, you you deserve that win. You were the better team. You wanted it more. Um, and I definitely didn't go Cardiff five 0 so they've already pissed on my parade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going into this game, um, and it's interesting because. Um, the last five games coincides with when I asked all the fans from the other club, well, the other top four clubs, to put their predictions in. Um, now, Leicester, um, we uh, Kate Blesser had predicted five wins. Um, and she had she had the audacity to say I was crap at predictions. <laughs> uh, but we've actually lost three and won two. Um, Leeds United have actually won one, drawn two, lost two. So we've made six points from the last five games. Leeds United, let me just add this up. Bear with me, Brad. Three, four, four, five, is that? A win and two yeah. draw? Yeah, so, 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 so somehow... Less than we have. So, so, so somehow, even though, according to Leeds fans, we're bottling it, we've actually gained a point on them. Uh Watford are backing it against Southampton. It's two one there now. Um, but yeah, it's funny that, isn't it, Chris? It's yes, real funny, isn't it? How we were. Yeah, I know, Ben. I've just seen your comment there. I'll never, never go against Millwall again. But he got that right <laughs> wrong. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's funny, isn't it? How yeah. you can be, how you can be so cocky and confident. What was it? Oh, then we haven't lost in 2024. We went and lost. Oh, we won't lose another game. We will we'll win all our games once we get across commentary. Drawn to. Oh, well, we've never lost to Ellen Road. <laughs> Not anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's all going yeah. wrong at the wrong time for Leeds and Leicester, admittedly. Um, so, no, you just, know, that, that is no, how it is. true from Giza there. Um, he's he's put one two, so I'm assuming the Ipswich are going to score a second goal on my screen. But um, I've still seen Southampton two. No, still oh, seen, oh. yeah. Um, if that is it. if that is a joke, then uh, in a second grey, will you kick Gizzer out, please? Unless uh, he meant they've just scored one to make it one all, because I haven't seen anything. I, I no, think he, he might... no, no, he, he, that is a score. That is a score that he's put in there. Uh, we'll give it a no, few he's put Ipswich to... just scored one, two, as if to say they've scored one as well. I think that's how he's not meant to put the number. No, I'm no, Chris, I'm genuine with that one. That's how I'm reading it. I think he's genuinely meant to put Ipswich have scored as in they've scored a goal, too. He's just shortened it to like text talk. Mm. Or no, no, Bolton won all. So no, yeah, no. I, I, I bear with it. All I, will say is, Gisa, all I will say that is your last warning. Yeah, he's on. He's on a yellow card. He's on a yellow. Yeah. I'd give. He's I, I on would, a blue card at the yeah. moment. So but I'll tell you what. I'll be the VAR instruction. <laughs> I've told you not to send him off, but put him on a blue band. Yeah, put him on a timeout or something for yeah. three hundred seconds or something. If you want to be cautious. So, but we do know. We do at the moment. Our our form is awful, but they're just the form of all the three. But look, Millwall wanted it more. Plymouth wanted it more. Yes, you can say Plymouth. Probably more so than Millwall, but Plymouth actually um, parked the bus, you know. And it, we, we, but we asked for us to try and break that down. And what is wrong with them parking the bus? Would we not do that? Well, yeah, of course you would. I mean, why wouldn't you? You're winning a game. Um, you, you know, you, you've got to go. You've got to do the logical thing in in a situation. You know, we're, we're, we're out of form. And if we'd have got ourselves in front last night, and we've seen it in other games, Chris, you know, we got a bit nervy towards the end of the Birmingham and Norwich games, which we went on to win. I know against Norwich, we did go and get a third, but we kind of went, OK, we're in front. The game's near the end. This is this is time to sensible soccer, as they called it, the game, if you remember it. 
Mm. Um, you know, you know, you got to be sensible. You got to read the game situation. We don't need another goal. We need to shut this out, and that's what teams do. So we can't sit here and do a Jurgen Klopp and blame it on bad football. Do you remember when we scored five, but it was defensive, not playing football against them? And Pep Guardiola said, "Yeah." Mm. So I'm not going to sit here and do a Klopp or a Pep. You know, at the end of the day, they're, they're doing exactly what any team in their position needs to be doing: getting a, a lead against a strong high up outfield side that are fighting for promotion and, and holding on to it for love nor money, you know, for everything. Yeah. Um just looking at this review and these are supplied by who scored.com. Um nothing happened before uh, Plymouth scored the goal. At least it wasn't a worldie this time, but uh and we'll like I say we will come on and you I'm sure we'll come on to the individual players, but should he been have been allowed to get that goal? Should he have been closed down? No, he shouldn't have been allowed to to get the goal. Let's be honest with you; it's it's so poor. And 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 I'll touch on it a bit more later on in the show, Chris. Yeah. But this yeah. is look, I I love what out phases made. He runs, but he's not doing the Steve Walsh Matt Elliott job that that O'Neill did when he sent a striker up front. He is leaving us exposed. Up front. Where where did he normally have the strikers in goal? I meant that defenders. Was John, you know what John I meant. Wallace, I, remember? Well, yeah, I play football backwards in my mind, but you know what I meant, Chris. I mean, you know, yeah, normally yeah, I'm, I'm, being, I'm, I'm being facetious. I am being I'm, facetious. Well, I, I never would have guessed, but you know what I mean, though, Chris. They, they, you know, Leicester used to do it. Anyone who remembers O'Neill days. um, he used to take a player off, but he would keep two centre backs on. But he'd chuck, he'd tell, he'd say, he'd say to Elliot, right, you go up front, uh, and he'd put Taggart on or or whoever was there at the time. He'd go, you're going to come on and go in that back line with Steve Walsh, and Elliot's going to go up as a, as a second or even a third striker. At some points, we were we were trying to get him back into games. When you allow a centre back to be free running, and we've had it before with Maguire and the the French Voldemort. Right, you know, we have expressive and expansive center center backs that like to travel forward with the ball and get right in that forest losing right into their half, uh, and, and, and helping that midfield. The problem is, as good as FaZe and Ricardo are at tracking back and using their pace to, to, to make up the ground, several times in the last well, throughout the season, to honest with you, they have been caught napping. They've been caught dawdling on the ball and then not being able to make up the ground. And these incidents have been semi-regular throughout the season, Chris, and most of them have cost us a goal. Yesterday's was a great example of it. We were having the ball. We were still on top. We were still control, complete control of the game. But a pass too many, an indecisive movement from 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 FaZe, and he didn't know whether to keep going forward and try and win the ball or get back in his position, Chris. And ultimately, by not doing the latter, out, outdone, out tactic, could the defenders chuck and have done something else about it? Maybe. Could we have given away a tactical foul, got a yellow card? Probably. The ref was giving them, mm. you know. Uh, could Hermanson maybe done something a bit better? You know, it. Because there's a case of saying if he takes him out and gets something on the ball, he's not going to get a double jeopardy, and at least he's not tucking into an empty net. He's got a chance to save a penalty. I know we don't want to have that opportunity. But you know yeah, what I mean, Chris? There were so many little things that could have been yeah. done a little bit better that could have prevented the goal. And then who knows? I don't what... want to tread on your toes too much. So please, if yeah. I ask any questions that are going to sort of overlap with yours, just explain that and we'll, we'll move on. Uh, but when I look at the, the way that the defence lines up, it is very narrow. You know, yes. that we have, and it, I, I've seen it happen with, with Justin as well. Justin's looking over his shoulder, and so somebody coming up behind him, and he was having, he's having to backtrack a little bit because he's, he's so central. And it, but it's the same on the other side with FaZe as well. Yeah, the, the thing is, what we kind of have is we have a very cautious gap between us. You know, how I used to say about Brendan on the tactic video, Chris, five mm. yard pass, right. Well, the difference between that and what Enzo has is he, he you can see the struct excuse me, you can see the structure in the way of oh, Birmingham Eternal if I get to commentary Christ. Uh you can see the structure in the way Leicester are that apart from on the right hand side where Fatu seems to take matters into his own hand, Mavadidi uh, and 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 even Jewsbury Hall, who plays on that left hand side of the midfield, Chris, 
seem to play in a restricted way where they'll come back to support so much, but they're not willing to come too far back because it, it gives up the advantage of getting in behind the opposition and having men in, in, in front of their defence and not, not lagging behind trying to catch up to a potential attack. Mm. Um, so he could always get a bit of yeah. Chris, and that's what makes it a bit tight and sideways. Yeah, Birmingham were 2 0 up, and Ipswich have just hit the post. Um, the point post, you make there, it, it was it was almost like it was being sponsored by Clintons. Uh, what what I get annoyed about, and I'm sure Millwall fans who's in the gentleman will tell me if he felt it was worked the other way as well. But players go down and holding their head just to get the game stopped. Yeah, but the thing is, Chris, it's great when we do it. We can't complain about other teams do it because when we were winning games and we're holding on to two on leads and, and Manfred Edy was doing key pupils in the corner flag, we were loving it. It was great. It was gamesmanship, but that's what you need to do in this division. That's how you've got to win games. That's how you've got to see games out, not trying to score goals and, and overcommit and concede late goals. That's what we've got to do. That's what Leicester were very good for. They might not have scored many late goals, Leicester, but we were no, renowned for not conceding many goals. In fact, we went on an amazing run, didn't we, Chris, where you didn't you didn't score. If Leicester scored two, you weren't scoring. You weren't winning the game. No. You no. weren't getting a point from them. Now, that's maybe not so much the case. Well, we haven't scored more than one in our last three away games. So that's telling you that we can't even score to get that one. But can teams are doing this, Chris? And it's not it's not like we don't do it. You know that was the question, do we? I, I haven't maybe I've and I've got blue tinted spectacles on here. Um I don't haven't noticed us doing it, but I'm not saying that we don't. Well, the thing is, Chris, I remember one incident in the game yesterday, uh, last night, sorry, and you picked up on it in the, in the post-match. One thing we do do, which is which is probably worse, and definitely worse to us, is the ball went out for a throw-in. And it was just a throw-in. Yes, it was near the edge of a row box, it was a throw-in. But instead of doing his, his job, Chris... Remembering that we're in a division where there's no VAR, I'm not going to return it. Best of God. Yeah. Best of God, we're doing that. Why are you arguing? It's a throw in for fuck's sake. So it didn't go our way. Get on with your job. And they threw it into the space, Chris. It the did. thing is, I yeah. think we're letting our passion go. And I've said this a little bit about a particular individual, KDH, trying to be like the next Madison because he falls over and he rolls around and he, he goes up to the referee like this as if the referee's suddenly going to go, you know what? That free kick you've been asking for for four and a half minutes, I'm going to give it now. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I don't know why you think it is. I think we're letting that get... The, and I think we're letting the... Attempt, you know, we're letting mm. that boil over onto our passion on the pitch, boil over and into making mistakes because they could be just... That, that, them silly little pratty moments we're going, ref, 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 where, 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 where. It's costing yeah. us chances. It's costing us a breakaway because we're not that player's not switched on. It's costing us a goal or conceding a corner because that player's left his man to go and cry to the referee and the linesman. That that focus is our problem. That, that I did make him I did make a point to say in that yeah, because it, it the, the gap that Vestergaard left because he was arguing with the referee. Um and what what is the point? I mean you know, a manager should clamp down on that. Say that's not your first job. You're not going to get him to change his mind. Get on with the game. But yeah. men, men, it in when you're good. running past him and it's a goal kick. Give him a little more oh, ref, you should you, you booked. You know, I don't mind if the ball's out of play and he runs past the referee going, You booked Winks, why isn't he booking the referee? Still tells you to go away and whatnot. But you know what I mean? There's a time and a place to have a word with the referee, and that's and that is something that to me it's a captain's job anyway. Yes, yeah, so it is. Have some random but we, job. we haven't got particularly vocal captains, have we? You know, no, and I'm getting a bit sick with his captain's armband thing. Stick it on Ricky P and keep it with him. Because if anyone's flying in and giving it all that to referee and going to the referee and reminding the referee it's Ricky, I'm sorry, him or Winks, him or Winks should be mm. our captain because they are the vocal ones on that pitch. So yeah. I, I, I think Enzo needs to stop the pissing armband merry go round. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, Vard is a bit like a Beckham, isn't he? He will. Um, he leads by example, but you sometimes, like you say, Ricky P, not a captain for me. Winks, probably. 
uh, Vardy. You need somebody that, that that's got the authority, but you know, let's be honest with you. At the moment, I don't think anybody's up for it. Um, this is a summary. Now, this makes very very interesting reading. Um, now, Leicester, we don't have. They haven't given us any strengths at all. And I've got to say, looking at that game yesterday, I think they're spot on. Yeah, they were because we didn't really threaten an attack. Mm. We we were very meh when we had the ball. Yeah, we had lots of it, but I don't really remember too much in the attacking third because every time we got into attacking third, we lost all control of bodily functions and didn't know what to do with it. So, yeah, we didn't have any strengths against Plymouth. Uh, and I'd be remiss to think that the strengths were exactly the same against Millwall. None, because... That's how it's been for the that's how the last two performances have been, Chris. There is nothing, you know. We we try and see a positive in a bad result, whether that's a, it's not always a loss, but it could be a draw as well. We all try and see some positives in it, and uh, I and it's shocking to sit here and say, Chris, I cannot think of positives in the last two games. No, you know, no. Oh, right. I've just had a video sent to me. I, I'm sorry, Matt. I think I don't know whether you froze or I froze, or we both froze then. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've just had a video sent to me from Carl. I don't know what you're saying on it yet, but I might play that way. Well, I will play it later, obviously. Um, Millwall are winning again, apparently. West Brom have yeah, had a red card. Um, taking the lead at let's, West Brom. let's do a poll at finishing. Uh, no poo, Patrick. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> state, state the obvious. But we've got to do that, haven't they? It's state the obvious. We were, we were hopeless at finishing. And that's saying something when you consider we didn't have many chances to... to to finish or take away. In fact, one thing that wasn't highlighted, and I'm astounded uh, uh, from what I saw of it, Chris, of how casual and how nonchalant were. Did anyone else analyse Dakar's offside goal? Because he didn't look offside to me. He did. He was. Was he? No, because genuinely I only saw it once, Chris. I only saw the replay (laughs) once. I'm like, oh, that's closer than you think. But Elliot didn't seem to really go, oh, he is offside, but it made it sound like it was a month. No, no, because I just wanted to maybe think that was start. a point. Yeah, but when when I did see one angle, and I actually made the comment that he was a body width in front of the defender. Yeah. So you know, if you stand at the side and take that as your body width, he was that far offside, if yeah. you like. So. Yeah, I just um, wanted to say you know, I was surprised it, it, that wasn't more of a talking point, but they were so casual about it on LCFC. I thought, well, I must not have seen a replay that they they've seen. Maybe I missed it. So, oh, that's fair enough. As long as I know, because I thought, yeah, you know, typically the one time he has his shooting boots on. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Plymouth were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from counter attacks. Yes, they were. Uh, they were their weaknesses uh, were not being aggressive, lost possession often, gave away a lot of free kicks around the box, gave away a lot of corners as well. But you know, Leicester is shit at corners, aren't they? We used to say that a while ago, didn't we? Do you remember? It's like oh, I think we've, I think we've been the opposition saying get a corner, in... it's a goal for them. Yeah, in fact, we've probably been saying that Leicester are shit at attacking corners since twenty uh, twenty. Yes. And that's yeah. even when we had the likes of Soyuncu and, and Morgan and Evans in the box for us. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the styles, they favoured long balls attacking down the right side, which we'll see in a second. Favoured long balls. Uh, we had a large quantity of possession in the opponent's half. Uh, didn't do us much good, though, did it? Uh, attack through the middle and dominated possession. Uh, it's all right having all that dominated possession, but you need to do something with it, don't you? You do, and again, for the last few games, Chris, we've not been doing anything with it. And it, in fact, you know, you could say in the last in the last two games, Chris, 180 minutes of football, Leicester have controlled 40 of them in an attacking sense. Mm. Uh, Gray said he wasn't impressed with Morgan Whitaker, another target. Look, I think ignore these targets because at the moment we could, we have, we've got a transfer embargo on us. So all these rumours about, oh, we're interested in this player, we're interested in that player. Wait, it doesn't mean anything. Like, we're, under we're, transfer, anybody. we're under a transfer embargo. And, and even when we weren't, we couldn't afford two pissed million. No. So, no. And he's doing very well for Atlanta at the moment. Um, if he's, oh, sorry, not Luckman you're on about. No, I'm on about the Sensei. It oh could yeah, have been, exactly, it could have been a yeah. wise purchase. We we may well have um uh what did they say? 
Uh, we may well have been lucky to miss out on that one, though. He's in hospital, isn't he? Um, no, attempts know, here. They had five. We had 17. 13 of those were from open play for us. Four was a, a set piece. Um, I mean, 17 shots, 0% conversion rate. They had five shots, and obviously they got the one goal. It is, I think earlier in the season, the fact that the strikers weren't scoring mm. wasn't particularly or deemed to be a problem because the goals were coming from all other areas. Kieran Dewsbury Hall, Fatarou, Mavadidi. But suddenly they've dried up almost from everywhere, haven't they? They suddenly look afraid to take it on and, and shoot themselves. But all three of the players you just mentioned there, Mavadidi, KDH and Fatawu, I have sense that their job is to go down the byline or run into the box and cross the ball. They're not allowed to shoot. They're not allowed to, to take a long ranger. They're not allowed to do this and do that. And if they get it and if they do shoot uh, long range and it doesn't go in, they're going to get scolded for it. And I'm not... No, I'm not saying that Enzo's throwing water bottles around at them, but, I mean, it just seems that way, Chris, because all of a sudden they've gone from confident players that want to shoot and do everything right to, no, I must pass it, no, I must cross it, no, I must do this. I've been making this point for, well, it feels like since the start of the season, Chris, why is our obsession with crossing the balls into the box to five foot six blokes? Why Why are we so obsessed with crossing the ball into a, to, to players mm. that are barely five eight? It just it, I, let them shoot, let them have a freedom, and well, we'll get to it when it comes to my part of the show. I'll talk about how we yeah. get some freedom in that in that area. Yeah, and like you said, McAteer was chipping in with goals earlier in the season as well. Um, look, I, you know, I know you're not a fan of stats. I am, but this is one stat that I always wet myself. Um, they had 292 passes, we had 671. But apparently, six hundred and seventy of those were between the back, the, the back four, and Hermanson. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me, mate. I mean, I mean, I just obviously. I but mean, you, know, you if, get what I mean, don't if, you? If, stat, if stats like that won us a league, would have been promoted in February, mate. In fact, would have been promoted in about November because we'd have had about four hundred passes more than every opposition we've ever played. Mm. So I just, I just don't get it. I just, for me, right, I. I, I I I do understand to a degree fans' frustrations with Enzo's football because when we get it right, like we did against Norwich and like we had done against Southampton away and Blackburn away and other teams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's absolutely fine. But this team can't seem to kind of just figure out when it needs to be nice and slow and patient and move with purpose because we've gone away from that, Chris, haven't we? You know, I cannot... For the life of me, Chris, and you, you know, you're saying we had 13 corners, you're saying we had 14 chances, or whatever it was in in, um, in, in total, you know, in, in the game. The, the, the most worrying thing is, Chris, and this goes back to Millwall as well, I don't remember either the Argyle or the Millwall keeper making a save of any note. Mm. At least not to say, Chris, I remember going, oh, me, what a save. At no point during that game did I sit did I sit through any of them two games, Chris, whether we had 600, 700, 900 passes, 30 shots, 12 shots, 15 shots, whatever. Did I sit there going, fuck me, how's he saved that? Oh, mm. fuck me, how's he missed that? You know, in terms of like a, an open, you know, ricochet you know a safe parried out and and someone's missed an open you know what i mean chris and, that, and that's the most concerning thing for us right now is these stats you might as well scrunch them up into a ball and throw them in the bin because they mean jack all right now with how how we're performing in the key areas and that's defending and attacking a goal we're not doing either properly I'm just going to, before we move on to the next slide, I'm just going to go down the half times. It's half times uh, all the way around the country at the moment. There was Leeds nil, Blackburn Rovers won earlier on today. That's a full time. Uh, Birmingham 2, Coventry nil. Uh, Bristol City nil, Huddersfield Town nil. Hull City 2, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Ipswich Town 1, Middlesbrough 1. Millwall 2, Cardiff City 1. Preston North End nil, Norwich City nil. 
Sheffield Wednesday nil, Stoke nil. No surprise. Southampton two, Watford one. Uh, Swansea nil, Rotherham nil. And uh, West Brom nil, Sunderland one. So those are your half times. Those are your half times. You didn't um, do that professionally enough at all, Chris. Where was it? Now here comes your classified LTID TV. <laughs> <laughs> Southampton two, Watford one. There we go. Is that, uh, is that how you want it doing? That, it's the Italian. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Don't blow kisses to me. I've told you before. Um, right, looking here at the attack sides, um, pretty much 34, 34, 32. You can't get much more uh, even than that, can you? I think that's because Plymouth was sitting back. But the one I did want to mention below was the shot direction. So on the right side, where Fatou was, and I think he stayed on for the whole game, didn't he? Yeah. No shots from that right-hand side. I mean, Again, 71% down the middle, 29 from the left, but none at all from the right-hand side. Chris, and it kind of backs my point and kind of begs the question, why? Why is he Why is he not being... It's almost like, for, you know, for, for two wingers that between them have got, must have about... 30 goal in inclusions because Mavadidi's got, I think, 12 goals this season. Fatou's got four or five, and they've both got a handful of assists each. So they've got to be up there in the 30 goals, um, you know, for, via goals and assists, so goal involvements. Um, why? Why is it 71% through the middle? Because where we attack from, it's very even 32, 34, mm. 35. That, Chris, used to be mirrored down below when we were winning games. When we were beating your Rotherham's 2-1, um, when we was beating your, you know, your Sheffield's 2-0, when we was, you know, you know, beating these sides week in, week out, whether it was, you know, like I said, whether it was a 2-1 or it was a 4-1, Chris, we used to do these shows fairly regularly. And that, that percentage of 33, 33, 33, or, you know, mm. you know very close in numbers yeah. as they are, used to be the same down below. Sometimes a little bit more on the wings, uh, you know, a little bit yeah. higher on the attack on the wings and that. That just shows me how damning and how untrusted these players are because they're being told not to shoot. Now, Fatua could kind of get stopped trying to curl it in top corner from the edge of the box, you know, can't make part down on that. But in general, Chris... They have both found themselves in good spaces. And yes, okay. it's split second, howdy Jack. It's split second decision making that these players make these in. But if you looked back over certain games, Chris, I'll take you back to the one of the early ones. Huddersfield away, Mavadidi drove into the box. And the only thing on his mind is I'm smashing this into the back of the net. And all right, went through the goalkeeper's legs, but he got the goal against Plymouth. There was a few split second chances where Fatawu or Mavadidi had the ball in the box or were driving into the box and they felt the need to try and cross it 10 foot in the air so the goalkeeper can get it, but enough so it drop on Ndidi's head or Mavadidi's head and they'd had it cross. You know, it's like, why? Why are these players suddenly not, not shooting, not taking the chances? Why are they suddenly seemingly not being backed by Enzo to do what they feel they're good enough and confident enough to do? Because when you tell a player, stop doing something, or I don't want to see you doing this on a pitch, you'll tell that player, oh, well, maybe I'm not that good at it. Maybe I just really shouldn't do it ever. And that mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of because that's who used to frustrate us with shooting, but it would help us in the game because we're going more can create chances. Get him in a better position, you know. He might score the next one, or oh god, if he'd have passed it then and he does that next time, he's mm. we're going to get a goal from it now. Nothing, Chris. Seventy-one percent through the middle. For what? How many goals, Chris? Can you count them on one hand? Because I don't even need hands to count how many goals we've scored going through the middle consistently. Zero. Hey, our magic. I can do maths without even realising me, Chris. And, and it worries me. It does worry me because even if. Leeds keep bottling it, and I want to bring it up again because I can, right? And we do go up next season. This concerns me that this is what we're going to see in the Premier League. Going away from what made us go top of the league, because this is not the Leicester that was 17 points clear at first place. 
this is the nervous, lost the confidence, lost the way, and maybe maybe not the big red panic button, but a panic button has been hit. And it sent shockwaves throughout the players. And the, that, we're seeing more arguments on the pitch, Chris, aren't mm. we, than we are patterns yeah. on the back. We're seeing slaps around the back of the heads more than anything. And it it is concerning when we think about it. And that's the manager's job to fix. Yes, yes, it is. Like, like I said yesterday, and I think somebody else has said it in the chat today, but I said it during the watch-along. If the players show as much passion for winning and getting the ball on the pitch as they did with arguing with each other and arguing with the referee, we might actually, you know, get some results. Um, the, the next um, one here is um, the uh, shot zones. They didn't have one shot in the six-yard box. Um, 65% of our shots were from the penalty area. Uh, six were in the six yard box, but again, when you look at the um, uh, how what was on target, it, it wasn't that brilliant. But the bottom one again is more interesting 43 percent, nearly half the game was played in the Plymouth third. And what good did it do us? It cost us a point or three because we didn't do anything with it. And again, Chris, I, I, I know I don't like stats, but the falling in my favor in this house. Chris, we're trying. Do you do you remember when Arteta first took over? And I'm going to use this as an example because you because someone made the very good point last late last night that maybe we would feel a bit bitter if we let Enzo go and he turned out that if you give him time, he can become a great manager, which is what Arteta was like under Arsenal. They were threatening to sack him every game he played in the first season or two that he was there. They um, wanted him back, didn't they? They did, they did. And look how that's turned out for them. Yes, they're not winning the league, but it's Man City there at the end of the day. And they still might win this league. They're still up for it. But you know, you, you know what I mean, yep. Chris? But my, my problem is, it's again, we're going away from what got us in a very strong position, Chris. We're trying to walk it into the net. And I don't understand where this has come from because Leicester, again, were not doing that earlier in the season. Yes, majority of your goals come from inside the box sometimes it's just inside the box but it is inside the box technically on a, on a percentage scale so okay you look at that 65 percent and you may be saying maradini's hit one as he stepped in the box so technically it was inside the box you know you're talking a, a hair's width between being inside and outside of it but then 29 percent chris I would imagine was a shot that was taken in anger and frustration that we hadn't had a shot and someone like KDH, KDH felt the the need to shoot because he got a half a second space and kind of thought, oh, this, I'm having a mm. shot. And it, it, you know, it got blocked or it went miles over or wide. But Leicester used to score goals from in and around the edge of the box, Chris, and a lot of it. And we used to, we yes, okay, we would still score quite a few goals from that inside that six yard box, but there'd be crosses. Remember the two goals KDH scored against Coventry, one outside, one on the six yard box. But that six yard box was a was a beautiful cross in from the right that he headed home. It wasn't tippy tappy, you know, seven Leicester players versus six Coventry players trying to pass it round them and pass it into the net. It was a direct goal. Mm. Um you know, from 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 a direct source, wasn't it, Chris? You know, everything's changing the way Leicester go about things. No, no, indeed, indeed. Before we get on to your to your section, I want to finish off with this, and then we'll obviously, you know, you go over and um, and talk sense, and then we're back to uh, to the points. But um, I just we do a we did a, a player profile. Um, I would have done it on Madsen Manson, but he had fuck all to do apart from pick the ball out the net. I think that's the only time he really touched the ball. Uh, but I do want to talk, and you probably know who this is going to be, Mr. Dacca. Now, yeah. I just want to say a few things before we uh, we do. Um, I've got, um, I've said here, no, yes, he was awful yesterday. No, I did not pick him in my starting 11. Yes, Enzo should drop him for his own sake. Uh, but it's not, as we said earlier, you know, this is a team game, not a one on one tennis match here. But surely for his own sake now, when you looked at him, when he was substituted, he was sat on the bench with his shirt over his face. And this is a guy that, you know, you, you, nine times out of 10, a bit like Shinji Okazaki, always smiling. Um, 
he needs to be dropped, doesn't he? He does for his own sanity. He needs to be dropped. You know, you sometimes you can get caught up trying to play somebody into form. In it's, you know, it's like trying to force something into somewhere it shouldn't be. You try and do it, and you're hoping it'll happen, and it all breaks apart, and you, uh, it looks worse. It looks worse than what it is. And whilst I understand the annoyance and the grievances that some of the chances Daka had, he still had more chances than Vardy did. He still got more. He still got more on the ball than Vardy did. And yes, his chances were frustrating because when you're a striker in certain areas of the pitch, you're expected to do better. This is also a guy that's being kept purposely under the limelight and the pressure on him because we have seen throughout his career at Leicester that a confident Dakar can do well in front of goal. Like I said, yes, it was offside, but his, his finish was actually quite composed and quite well, yeah. you know, and the Argyle defence hadn't exactly switched off. The, you know, the flag came up after he'd already got through and, and, and scored the goal. Obviously, it didn't count. But I understand it, and this is what I meant when I said it earlier in the show, Chris. He gets criticised more than anybody, not just because he didn't play well, which, you know, any poor player warrants being told off by us or had a go out when they don't play well. And I, But I expect it everywhere on the pitch. The reason he gets so much fire about it is because if 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 Daka misses a chance, it's 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 costly. It costs us, and it's the same if it's Cannon or if it's Vardy or Ianacho. But he's currently in the limelight and the starting eleven and getting the chances. The thing that that, that always frustrates me a little bit is why did nobody call Harry Winks a donkey for putting it ten yards over the bar hmm. when he had his shot? Oh, because it's not his job. But it, but it, isn't it the team's job to score goals? Isn't it the team's goals to make it? Um, see, great. I, I, I kind of disagree because in that moment, I get what you're saying. It looks like it. If you watch Daka's chance he had in that second half, they're literally the last chance he had before Vardy was brought on, who, again, had one chance and missed it himself, didn't have any other chances. That ball wasn't played to Daka. How he wants. Daka wants them all played through to him. Daka mm. wants to be one on one with a keeper so he can sit him down, put it in the net. What Daka doesn't need is a 10 yard pass being belted at him. He's got to swing a leg at, leg at it. Because I can tell you this now if he connects with it, it's going in the net. Because the way he got his body over the ball, the way he swung his legs, it's not going to take off and go into Roseanne. It's, you know, um, it's going to thump the back of the net. The way he was swinging to it, that on target, it break the keeper's hand trying to save it. It was going in. The fact that he missed it makes it look worse than what it is. And I understand what you're coming from. And it seems like he's he's missing easy chances to score. But I would say he's probably had four. Still, if he's had four chances in the last two games, Chris, they've still been far more difficult than the four Vardy had in the in the entire game against Bristol and didn't put away. Mm. I think they were easier for Vardy to score than Daka's instinctive shooting that he had to do because Chris, and again, yes, it was offside. I get that. But the one goal he did score, the one time he hit the back of the net was exactly what I've just said, how Daka wants it. Play it in front of him. Give him, Don't give him too much time to think about it. Let him just hit it first time pretty much as he likes his onto it. He'll score. And that's what he did. That's what he does do for as well. I'm just looking here, and I quoted this yesterday. Uh, and I know it was on for a lot longer. Uh, 66 minutes. I mean, let, we're breaking it down. Give or take a minute or two, because Vardy actually had five, six minutes of injury time as well, stoppage time to play. You could say that uh, two-thirds of the game Daka was on, one-third of the game um, Vardy was on. So Vardy kind of really should have a third of, of, of Daka's touches. Daka had 24 touches. Vardy, while he was on, had three. Yeah. Now, yeah, so to, you can't really do me, much about that. You know, no, you, you know, to me, I mean, you know, we, we've got to, um, well, you know, my, my argument is it's a team game. Yes, let, let's 
have a moan at people when they when they, they play badly. But let's make it let's make it even. You know, if Vardy had come on and got a hat trick in them, you know that that third of the game he was playing, then it's a different story. But you know, he wasn't exactly getting involved in the game, Vard. Vardy was he? And you know, no, he wasn't. This, this argument this argument about like, oh well, he's earned he's earned the right. He's done. Yes, he has. But then, if no one said, no, 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 Chris. No one's ever earned the right to have a bad game. No, 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 no. no. What I mean is, he's earned the right to. Yes, I get. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah. I don't just say this. He, he, you know, he, he's done. He's done so well over the years, if you like. But then again, Claudio did so well for one season, but we sacked him. You know, you, you, you know, Brendan Rodgers did so well for three seasons. We sacked him. You're only as good as the current season. I don't give a fuck what Vardy did. Six months, seven, uh, six seasons ago, or whatever. I, I, I did at the time, but now we're talking about the here and now. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, um, you know he, and that's, a, that's a great point you make, Chris, because okay, Cannon, we're yet to see again since his injury, since he's come back. A little bit concerned by that. Why spend 10 million on him if when he's fit, you're not going to use him? But anyway. None of our strikers are firing, so it's not. This is what I mean. It's it's so um, for me. It's a bit. It's hypochondriac. The right word I'm thinking there. You're a bit yeah, of hypochondriac. <laughs> you won't if you won't blame one, but you'll blame the other when both it, it, when neither are doing their job. If that makes sense, is it? I don't know. I don't know. Ronald oh, says the thesaurus yeah. word I wanted to yeah. use. One of yeah. my men. You know what I, I don't, mean? It was certainly not hypochondriac. That's when you think you're ill and you're not or something, isn't it? Uh, I mean, wow. Ronald says here, Vardy only had three touches yesterday. That's down to the tactics. The same tactics were that were being employed for the previous sixty-six minutes. So I don't remember the tactics changing when Vardy came on, did they? No, they didn't, because every yeah. single so sort of name. It was the same, was the same was... again, Ronald. This is what we're saying. Don't have a go at one when the same applies to the other. And just yeah. say, well, and, and, and it was Daka, uh, you know. Yeah. It, and I'm, and so, sorry, Chris. Just I'm, I, I'm adding to your point here. And under no circumstances, at no particular place, unless you're being uber clinical with it, which is something Vardy can't do anymore. He still, he now, yes, he's got 16 goals a season, but he needs a hat full of chances just to start taking them and get the ball rolling. But, Chris, never in a month of Sunday should you have an energetic striker with lots of pace and your combined touches with your other striker who comes on with 24 minutes to go not make not make more than 30 touches mm. on no planet i'm sorry but on no planet does that win you games when your strikers have in uh, and chris you're talking 600 671 passes last are made how is that two strikers not even having not even taking it below the 500 mark, you know what I mean? We're still in the 600 passes mark, and we've counted, we've accounted for Vardy and Dakar's touches. Just that's that if that's not sending alarm bells that the individual and the tactics the problem, and they're mm. not playing to any striker's strengths, not just Vardy's, they're not playing to Ian Acho's, they're not playing to Dakar's strengths. I can't say the same about Cannon because he had one run in the team, got a few goals, and then got injured again. But them three, he never seems to play to their strengths. And again, and I know I'll have my moments say it, he plays, he, he makes the players play to his tactic and he doesn't make his tactic play to the players. Mm. And that's the concerning part I have with Enzo's tactic because I'm all for it if it's working and benefiting the team. Yes. Yes, 100%. Um, you are going to get your chance to have a say now because it's straight after this. We are going to be looking at uh, Brad's tactics. <laughs> get your tactics out for the girls, Brad. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey, guys. Ian Hume here. Hi, everybody. Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! Right, here we go then. Uh, Brad, it's over to you. 
I'm going to go yeah, for the feature. Well, I mean, first of all, um, the, the, I'm going to start off with the with an obvious cliche. The definition of insanity is trying to, the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And unfortunately, with Leicester, they are expecting the same steady performances to warrant the same results as they were in the earlier part of the season. But they're trying to do it when they're in a sort of form that isn't rendering them results, Chris. We're losing games. We're struggling in games. We're struggling to score in games. Uh, and it's it's very frustrating because I can tell you, Chris, and I think you could tell me, and I think most of us in the most of the people in the chat could tell me pretty much what every single player individually is going to do for the majority of that game. And this is any game. Doesn't matter if it's Plymouth we're playing. Doesn't matter if it's a bloody Rochdale in the cup. Oh God, Birmingham free country nil. Um, you know Leicester are going to do the same. And I'll, I'm going to briefly run through the eleven and what they do. Hamadson is going to play it short to Vestergaard or Faze. Faze is going to go on one of his mazy runs and try and be a centre forward or pass it to Vestergaard. Vestergaard is either going to pass it to Winks or one of his defenders or hit a ball out wide to Mavadidi uh, or Fatua. JJ is either going to kick it back to the goalkeeper or he's going to go down the wing. Ricardo is either going to give it back to the goalkeeper or he's going to go down the wing. Fatua is going to run down the right and either cross it in and get to the byline and cross in or he's going to drive into the six-yard box and then try and dink a crossing. Mavadidi is going to go down the left. He's going to try and get on the bar line and cross it in. No, he's going to drive into the box, get to about the six-yard box, and then try and cross it in. Where are we? Harry Winks is going to face his goalkeeper and either pass it him straight back because three people cried it around him, or he's going to pass it to Dewsbury Hall. Dewsbury Hall is going to come deep to get the ball, drive forward, forget how to play football, and pass it to anybody. Daka or Vardy or Ian Acho are going to run into space and never get the ball. And when they do get the ball, they're coming back from an offside position. Uh, who else do I need to cover? Wolford and Deedy will run, 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 and then needlessly give away a free kick. Uh, I think that's everybody. Chris, I think I've covered exactly what every single player in that team does. Now, that's concerning, Chris. If I can sit here and analyse and tell you in, in a brief detail what every single player does, then how, how is it not obvious that the caretaker manager at Plymouth can figure it out, right, that we aren't changing things? We have been saying this since Powell. We've probably been saying this actually realistically since we won the league under Ranieri, uh, that the plan works for a while, but, Chris, and I hope you're ready, get, get your fingers ready to click on, Chris. What we don't have and what we haven't had for about five, six, maybe longer in years terms is um, we don't have a plan B. We don't have a plan B. But I do, rest assured, folks, here I am to solve your plan B and how we get the best out of players that we currently have in, in, in just tweaking things, just tweaking things just a little bit to make it make a little bit more sense. And I've created a plan B tactic that I feel plays to our player strengths and not our manager strengths. OK, now I'm not going to say all of a sudden that we're going to abandon the fancy passing football, but we're going to up the tempo on it, first of all. Now, there's many uh, players in there that... Um, two seconds, Chris, let me just... Uh, yeah, oh, cool. Um, sorry, just dealing with that. For me, the shape change is obvious. First of all, there's no wingers. Okay, no, there's a winger on the pitch, but he's not a winger in this. I want stability at the back. Look, I love a wild phase run as much as the next person. But over the last seven or eight weeks, Chris, it's cost us, right? We have somebody who can push in front of Vestergaard and go a little bit more forward, but can be a bit more reserved. And that, for me, is... Connor Cody comes in for Wout Faze. I don't think Wout Faze is, is a terrible defender, but I think the, that his, his license to thrill is costing us. 
And again, that's Enzo telling him he has permission and not railing him in. So first of all, the big change at the back for me is Connor Cody. More dis more disciplined, more cautious of what he's doing. He can still pick a good pass and he can still go forward a little bit, but he's not leaving us exposed on a counter-attack. A counter-attack that has devastated us by Bristol, Millwall and Plymouth. Right? I like Vestergaard. I'm with you. I hated him. I wanted him gone. I called him all the names of the sun when he wouldn't go to Fulham. But he's he's redeemed himself and all is forgiven. And I'm sorry. Apologies. You're getting into heaven, Vestergaard. I'll put a name up there with you. You're fine. <laughs> I have no issues with Vestergaard because he, he, he anchors that defensive line. I don't even mind the inverted wing-back style that JJ and Ricardo have because I like the fact that they push forward to support our midfield, and it gives us that number advantage in that midfield. Now, where things dramatically change, <laughs> funny enough, the only thing that doesn't change in the midfield is the, is, is the uh, big cog in the midfield, Harry Winks. We do need that. We do need that there because whilst Cody won't adventure forward as far as Wout phase, he is there to kind of go between, isn't he? If Leicester lose the ball, he drops deep. He makes sure we've got a a guard to replace the defender and if we go forward he's that he's that deep support player that if we need to recycle the ball he's only about 40 yards out so we're not going all the way back to her madsen so structurally not too much changing so far a bit of personnel change but not structurally so much changing where it changes is i don't i don't have wingers i don't have wingers because right and and i feel sorry for mavadidi in here because i had to flip a coin between him and KDH, but I feel from a midfield structures, we can't convert two wingers into position. Now, they're not central attacking midfielders, I've got there, Chris, and the reason I make that point is, is Dennis Pratt's in a number in a number 10 role, or a number 9, a false 9 role, if you really want to be pedantic about it. I've got Fatou as a right attacking midfielder, and Kieran Dewsbury Hall as a left attacking midfielder. And the reason I've put them in that position is, A, it means once we press forward and the likes of Justin Ricardo come there, we we overrule the bodies in the middle of the park. We're going to have a five-man midfield, right, still pressing our attack. We've got outlets and options. And we are advanced up the pitch without us being our furthest advance because the three players in front of them allow them to do that. And also, when you when you put Fatawu and 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 um, Kieran Jusby Hall essentially playing in line with the edge of the opposition's box, they can still drift out wide. They can still create space to allow Ricardo Winks and that to slowly push it from the back, but also drag defenders with them, create the space for Pratt. Who I've put in there purely because out of all the players we've got available for it, he's the most competent in that position. I love the fact that indeed he's taking a sort of role, but for me, in front of goal, we need someone with a bit more purpose and shooting boots. Pratt, we've seen, can at least do that. I was tempted to put Mavadidi in there, but he'd be better suited to the Jewsby Hall left attacking mid role. Again, emphasis on left and right attacking mids and not centre mids. Right, mm -hmm. oh, and, and, and Grace hit the nail on the head. The reason I've moved them into attacking midfielders and not wingers is nobody can cross the ball and nobody up front can head the ball. Well, they can head the ball, but they're not tall enough to compete with six foot two, six foot centre back to regularly head the ball for us. So we can compact the middle and we can stretch to play at the same time with having two left and right attacking midfielders that can operate inside and out. And what that also allows us to do is we know Jamie Vardy likes to drop back. We know he instructs Dakar to drop back and help. But with going to up front and having Dennis Pratt there, Dennis Pratt can drop back into, into almost a, 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 a three line of Pratt, you know, Abdul one side of him and, and Dewsbury Hall the other side of him. They can all drop back and get the ball. And Vardy can then sit where Pratt is waiting for the ball or Tom Cannon can sit where Pratt is waiting for the ball. So when Leicester get the ball, high press, attack, go forward, get it to our front three, get it to our front men, give it to Pratt, give it to Abdul, let him run at them, let Vardy and Cannon get into space and drag defenders around, let's create space, bang, get in front. This tactic allows Enzo's style of be cautious, pass it around, be patient, wait for gaps, but then springs our attack straight on opposition in numbers. 
And that's something we've lacked, Chris. The amount of times over the last four or five weeks I've looked at Leicester going forward and it's three versus fours or it's three versus fives. It's just not working. We need to be able to at least throw the bodies forward and wait it out. And also in a way that doesn't leave us as exposed as we've been doing by allowing. Again, Ronald, this is me. This is what I do. I don't give a toss if Enzo wouldn't do it. This is how he should do it. And if he can't see it, then he's not going to be the man who's stuck around as manager long enough to, to keep this job going. He won't have a job at Leicester. For me, this is the way Leicester get the best. This is the best tactic, Chris, for the squad. Not for Enzo. This is... You, you, you said I, I actually request this show from you, didn't I, Chris? And you was already thinking great. I think I, this for me is the tactic that best suits the players we have available to us because I can take Mavadi, I can take Jewsbury Hall off, and I can put Mavadidi on. I can take Dennis Pratt off, and I can put, um, I can put, um, indeed, uh, you know, I can put Indeedy on there, or I can put Mavadidi there, I can take Fatu off even, and I can. I can put Eunice there. I can swap Pratt out there and I can, you know, I can play, I can put Ian Acho in Pratt's position. There is so many alternatives and changes you can make this aside that yes, it's personnel for personnel, but also offer us different to what they do, Chris, that for me, it just doesn't make sense that we don't have this as a structural plan B, especially when you look at other sides that have a plan B, Chris, mm. and, aren't dropping form or knocking on the doors of the playoffs or are, hey, my playoff team, my, my prediction league team, Sheffield Wednesday beating Stoke. Um, but, you know, teams like that, coincidentally, fighting for their lives, they have a structure to play against who they're playing against. And we mm. just have a different outlet that maybe against Southampton, you know, we can play the passive game. But against a team like Preston and against a team like Blackburn, well, we need to flood the midfield because they're going to stick 11 men behind the ball, Chris. And maybe even Southampton will do this to a point and West Brom in the remaining games, Chris. We're going to match them or overall them back and go, well, if you've got five in midfield, we've got five in midfield. If you've got three at the back, well, we've got three attacking players coming at you. And we've got two wingers, you know, we've got two attacking midfielders in support of them. That is how Leicester can potentially... I won't say save their season or anything or, or, or get over the line. But that's the way Leicester, if Leicester have that as a structural plan B, Chris, I'm not going to be over biased and say that's our plan A, it should be. That's why I named it plan B. But if we show that we have a structural way to do secondary football or change the tempo and go about the game if we're not things aren't going our way, that would make me think well, at least this guy's got something. Let him cook because he's working on a plan B and he's trying it. And let's see if we can get the balance right between the two. We could have a stormer of a season next year, no matter what division we're in. And that, Chris, is what I would do. Sod what Enzo's going to do, because I know he won't do this. But that's what I would do to give us options all through the pitch, Chris. Yeah. No, I mean, he does. He does we know he doesn't have a plan B. Um, it's plan A. I'm not sure about that. Well, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't even have that at the moment, does yeah. he? But um, his plan B, if you like, is oh, we'll keep the same formation, play the same tactics, but we'll just put a different peg in the hole. Yeah, yeah, and it's just not. It's just not going to work. Uh, and and I don't understand why the the structure of football has changed away from. From having a plan B, Chris, teams always had a plan plan A, and it was so it was so basic. You know, teams would go, we're playing Arsenal back in the nineties. Remember, they were actually a good side. Right, we're playing Arsenal, so we need to play like this, and then they'd play a Barnsley, and we can be more aggressive in expansion. And that was tactic A, tactic B, depending on who you're playing, and that's that's just what it is, and. Ben, you're a gentleman, so I'm glad you think I'm speaking so much sense. I'm glad people are seemingly agree with it. I am, you know, I just, I'm glad people think I'm, cheers, extreme, thanks for that. I just, I say how I see it and I like to see it and and and, and, and that just to me just makes, to me it just makes sense because we've just got options and we kind of subsidise for any potential mistakes 
and cover our own arses and mistakes that we have been making because that team doesn't allow them to mistakes to be made, Chris. So yeah. I don't know why it's there is a lot to, be to have said. a second tactic. There is a lot to be said for keeping the same um, formation and keeping the same players. I mean, and I know I've quoted this many times, but when we went up from the Nigel Pearson, I could have told you what his game, what his team was going to be on the 1st of September, on the 15th of July, because he was playing the same thing week in, week out. And of course, we stormed the championship with um, the, 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 you know, loads of records we broke, club records. We then got up to the Premier League and you couldn't predict it one week to the next. You know, somebody would get a brace, two goals, and we wouldn't see him for three weeks. Yeah, he, he was trying to change it, but there's got to be some middle ground, hasn't there? And yeah, yeah, all right, you you know, you have a plan A, and there's a lot to be said for Enzo saying, This is how I'm gonna play, and I want the players to get used to it, so that you know they're used to it. But you've still got to be able to tweak it and have a plan B. We went on so much about Brendan not having one. Yeah, Cole Powell didn't have one either. Like I said, I don't know why, but all of a sudden uh, 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 as as Bastion Ball is playing it out the back, seemingly is becoming for for, for football, uh, Chris. It seems that having a like, having only one plan and and not doing anything else other than that one plan you come up with is frowned upon. You know, it, it's it's as unpopular as that is popular, and I just don't understand it. The the, the logic behind it is baffling. How can you say that? A team in Leicester's position, or, or you know, the top five, have to play the same way week in, week out. But a mm. team like Plymouth, um, who will be more expansive when they play um, a Rotherham because they're relegated, I'm just going to use them as an easy example, and probably be more expressive and more attacking. But they play a Leeds and Leicester, ask, ask Leeds fans about how Blackburn did it. What they'll do is they'll go, not today. Nah, -uh. no, you're you not. Just, we're you just said that Rotherham was just going to go down. <laughs> I know. I mean, it was ironic because I saw it. And and Burnley are winning a game of football. The the apocalypse is next. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. But let you know me, what I mean, me... Chris? It's, yes. Oh, no, I do. The, it's playing the occasion and it's playing the right occasion with the right players. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually all for this style of play, Chris. And, may, and maybe, maybe, maybe next year, Chris, when out of contract players are let go and we're left with contracted players that we know we've got for a couple of seasons, whether we want to or not, and and and, and, and we actually are allowed a full rebuild. Maybe this was a false door. Maybe we got excited because of how well we're doing. Maybe next season's actually the re rebuild of Leicester, the true rebuild, because cheers, Sean. Appreciate that, mate. You know what I mean, Chris? Yeah. Maybe that's when the Leicester's true rebuild will happen because he'll have players there that are contractually committed to the club. He'll have a, a window where he's able to actually spend money. Um, you know, I'm, maybe I'm that's what we need something... to do. But right now, Chris, we're, we're not playing to our team's strengths. And if you're going to do that next season, fine. If next season he goes, right, I've got rid of eight players, I've got rid of players that weren't playing their way, and I'm going to bring in him, him, him and him because they play this patient tactic game very well. Fine. Mm. That's when you do it. But why you can't do that with the players you've got, play that suits them and make that your plan B. Make your mm. tactic the plan B and tell these players, we're going to work on this, by the way, because next season I'm going to bring in players that play this way. Yes. So, you know, you, you know what I mean? Yes. Let me throw something. Oh, piss at off, you. Stoke. Sorry, they've just um, equalised. <laughs> um, <laughs> come on, John Stoke. Let me throw this at you, Brad. Um, it's interesting how often teams that get promoted up to the Premier League start off very, very well and then just slip back down into where you'd probably expect them to be. I'll use as the one example that comes to mind, Blackpool. Mm. I mean, you know, if you said that Blackpool were going to win the playoffs, but they did, Blackpool were going to go to the top of the Premier League. They did. And then they almost got relegated. I don't think they got relegated that season. It was the season after. But it's that element of like, who the hell are these? Well, how are they playing? We don't know them. We haven't played. You know, they're a new team up. They haven't played. 
Uh, so for the first half of the season, you're playing everybody for the first time. And this is what I'm saying about Leicester. At the first half of this season, teams didn't know how to play us. And then they come for the second half of the season and they're going, well, they're playing exactly the same way as they played the first game. We know what to do now. Yeah, and that, and that is what makes me even more frustrated that we haven't been seeing Enzo's managerial brain. I don't mean that with the greatest respect because, Chris, I, you know, I always say this about a team and I'm going to say this about a manager. A good manager will keep winning games and finding a way to win games when all is... When all is um, when all is honky dory and everything, sunshine and roses. But you know what a great manager does when he's sitting there and he's watching his team beat bottom of the league two one and beating ten men QPR who were dog shite when we played them. Do you know what a great manager does, Chris? He goes, he turns to his his, his staff and he goes, right on the coach on the coach journey home. We're sitting down. Because this plan isn't going to work forever. Uh, we need to find a plan, work on a plan, train on a plan. So when it's needed. We've got it. We've got another way to to spring a trap on teams where they go. Hold on, you know, I, I you know, a, a great manager has a, has it in his bag that when it's ready, and you have to work on it in the training ground. You can't just throw it out there and do it at a whim. You have to work on it, and it takes several weeks to work on it, Chris. But you get to a point, Chris, where maybe Leicester are off the pace a bit, and they're still winning games, but only just. And then a manager comes in and goes. <laughs> Yeah, Leicester, they're gonna line up this way, they're gonna play this way, they're gonna play four, they're gonna play four, three, three. It's gonna be easy to figure out Leicester. And all of a sudden, oh what the shit? They've gone five yes. in midfield, they've gone one up. No, no, no. How do we oh guess what? The opportunity don't know how to deal with you because all of a sudden they're seeing a lineup and some players that they didn't expect to see yeah, because yeah. you've gone ah. <laughs> And, well, and, Ronald just said there, uh, Blackpool did go back down the same season. I yeah, thought, they did. They actually nearly, yeah, they lost the last but game. But to say the that they've been top of the did, table, they? I mean, it would have only been for one week or whatever, but, you know, they Probably were top of the table. Now. Because they were new. Nobody knew how to handle them. And how often, like I say, do you see teams that come up have a first good first half of the season, or a, you know, and then it kind of starts to go wrong. But look, whatever we say, we, we're watching it on telly, aren't we? Uh-huh. Alan... Uh, who goes to the match and bless him, he goes to every home game, he goes to every away game, unless there's some really good reason why he can't. He, he's he's been going longer than I have been supporting Leicester. He's supported Leicester. And he picks my man of the match and he also um, rates the team for us. And I have great faith in um, what he does. Now, uh, I was surprised with his choice of uh, man of the match. Um, well, I wasn't surprised. Sorry, I was. I agreed with his choice of man of the match. But I was surprised, Brad, with his. Uh, and we'll come on to individual ratings in a second. But he gave the overall team performance four, and I actually thought that was quite, quite generous. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, it was difficult to pick him man of man, man of the match. In fact, so I got. I got man of the match technically if you asked the panel last night. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah, that was true. funny. But it, it shows you how it's going, Chris, when we've gone from, oh, God, who was man of the match? They're all really brilliant, all really good to, oh, God, do we have to give a man of the match? And I don't know, maybe Alan's, maybe Alan's won them and he goes, look, they lost, but it was only 1 0. I can't go lower than it against Millwall. So it kind of matched it because I think he gave us a four against Millwall. But it was four more points than we gave him, weren't it, Chris? Yes. Yes. It was, oh dear, definitely. <laughs> um, I think uh, Dave Dave went three, bless him, and the rest of us all went nil. Huddersfield had just gone one nil up. Again, if you look, the teams that are at the bottom struggling, Plymouth, uh, Huddersfield, um, Blackburn, they're all, they've all won or are winning. Um, yeah, so, and it just proves it just because they're down there doesn't mean they're not fighting for no, it. It's just, no, it might be so, at the wrong end of the table, but they're still fighting for it just as exactly, hard as we're fighting exactly. for automatic. Now, man of the match, um, if you follow me on Twitter or X or whatever it's called, Twitter these days, or you're in the uh, Leicester Till I Die Facebook group, um, you'll know who the man of the match is. It wasn't Brad. Uh, he actually gave it to the fans. And I think... When I, I, I saw that um, that Jack was live on TikTok, and by the way, if you do like uh, like clips and just very, very short um, uh, clips, 
do follow us on TikTok. It's the black QR code. The red QR code is Instagram. We are trying to get to 1,000 so we can go live. I think we're about two off hitting 200, uh, which is not bad. So we've only been going about three or four weeks. So thanks for your support. But do you can scan it there or search Lester Till I Die. Don't add my personal one on. I ignore you because that's just for me and my family. But that one there, a QR code, you can scan or get over and join us, say Lester Till I Die TV. Um, but I saw I saw um, Jack on it, and it was something about 11 in the morning, something ridiculous like that. And, you know, people are giving up days' work to go down because it's on a Friday to see this. And they get to have to watch that. I think quite rightly that it should be given to the away fans. Yeah, I, I sometimes say it in jest when um, when it's that bad, even if it's only just... I know, but it's right, Chris, isn't it? It's not, a, it's not a cheap day out for away fans. Um, you know, there's the travel cost, there's the lot of income if you decide to book it off work. There's, there's, there's the that's bef there's the ticket, everything included. Oh well, what for the two two against Southampton? So they're bottling it as well. Well, um, you're ahead of me with your scores, so uh... it's usually my BBC slow on the phone, so I'm surprised by that. Um, but yeah, well, I I'm mean, on, I'm on the BBC as well. Forward slash. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, you were saying. But, yeah, yeah, but my, my, my point, Chris, is it, it, they deserve it, the fans. They deserve the, the, the reward. They deserve the, the attention they got because they did, Chris. They travelled five... They, they travelled over half a day. Mm. To, the, to get there and back, they would have travelled over half a day, even longer on the coaches. It probably took them a full day's worth of hours to get back on the coaches. Um, and 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 they, they don't deserve to get treated like that. And I know, look, I know it's easiest to say than to actually do. I can imagine so, even with our own as well. But if ever a set of travelling fans deserved a refund, for their expenditures of 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 you know like a almost a I'm sorry mm. here's here's a refund for the performance and and the time you've wasted that was it Chris. Now, if you want to now into the last five minutes of uh, the, the games now, I'll just run down the, the scores as they are at the moment. Uh, Obviously, I've got to say it played earlier. Leeds United nil, Blackburn Rovers one. And this is now the live classified results from Leicester till I die one. Uh, Birmingham City three, Coventry City nil, Bristol City nil, Huddersfield Town one, Hull City three, Queen's Park Rangers nil, Ipswich Town one, Middlesbrough one. Millwall 2, Cardiff City 1, Preston North End 0, Norwich City 0, Sheffield Wednesday 1, Stoke City 1. Boo! <laughs> oh, no, he shut up behind me. Uh, Southampton 2, Watford 2, Swansea 1, Rotherham United 0, West Bromwich Albion 0, Sunderland 1. There you go. Was that better oh, for you? No, you're wrong. You see, you're wrong, Chris. Goal update for you. At Deep Dale, Preston North End nil, Norwich City one. Well, that was that was not come up live on mine yet. But they always used to say when they did the classifieds, you could always tell what the second the second score was going to be by the way he read it. Yeah, you could, couldn't yeah. you? And you, you could, could tell if yeah. it was the team that he didn't want to win because he'd be like, "It's which town nil." <laughs> it's just so really quickly and he has to start and get on with it like oh, I don't want to say it but uh, we're not going to wait for the full times because it could be six and seven minutes um, in fact only the second goal then he just come up uh, it could be six or seven minutes stoppage time on um, so we're going to go through the players and give them our ratings uh, and we will do that um, very much so uh, after this <laughs> The 
TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die, independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network. Okie dokie, Bolton 1, Portsmouth 1. Portsmouth win today, they are promoted back to the Championship. Okay, let's go through these players. So what we're going to do is, um, we're going to go through, we've got Jordan uh, Blackwell from the Leicestershire Live stroke Leicester Mercury who's got his ratings in. I've done my ratings, which I attempted to send to Brad earlier uh, so he could see that I was, you know, being honest with my ratings, but it phone wasn't working and then uh i don't know do, do you want to go first or did you want me to go first brad no you go first so i can call you a liar <laughs> okay so um mad samanson uh obviously as you can see there uh jordan gave him five out of ten um i looked at it and i thought well he didn't really exactly have an awful lot to do did he you know he never kept us in the game or, or, or really never had any major saves to make. Uh, the most active thing he did was bending over to get the ball out of the back of the net. But it's hard to judge somebody who has so little impact on the game, even less than Vardy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in. Uh, I've given him five as well, just for turning up, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree. Didn't really have anything to do except pick the ball out of his net once, and that probably makes it even more infuriating. Because, like you said, Chris, it's not like he was peppered with you know 10 15 shots and kept us in it, and we were lucky it was only one. It's the only thing he had to do, and I oh, mean, made some comfortable p roller saves. So, I don't, I don't, I don't really count them anyway. I mean, if he lets if if they're not saved, he needs sacking. So, at five, five. <laughs> As well, yeah. Will we hear any sevens tonight? I don't know. Um, Ricardo, um, Jordan has given him a six. Uh, he didn't particularly do much wrong, did he? Um, I but I can't go higher, higher than a five, so I've, I've gone five for Ricardo. I was actually a little bit disappointed in Ricardo. And again, this is the this is the big debate I have. I don't know who's to blame. Is it the player or is it the manager? Um, because he just didn't seem to have that attacking flair. Look, first and foremost, he did his defensive duties fairly well, but he was also caught out and giving up position just as easily as FaZe did. I'm actually going to give him a four, Chris. I don't think he was his, at his best. And I think he nearly cost us a few more chances, gave away a few more chances than... Um, and he has done. No, no, well, four or five, you know. I mean, I'm not going to give any spoilers away here if I say it's all downhill for me from here onwards. <laughs> I've peaked very early with my with my scores. Um, Faze, uh, Jordan gave him three. Not one of his better games by a long chalk. I know uh, Gray's given him naught in the chat. I gave him two. I feel sorry for Wild Face in a way because his mistakes come from his secondary job that Enzo, for whatever reason, seems to be prioritising him do over his main job because he gets caught out going forward. He gets caught out position. He loses the ball high up in, 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 near the end of the box and 99% of the time, Chris, it's Costas. I'm going to give him a two. But it's not Hell, all his me picture on, did you? I didn't even realize, mate. But I said, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a two, but I will say it wasn't entirely Wout's fault that his rating so low, if that makes any sense. I'll give him a stu- two with an asterisk, but um, you, d- you did say it was gonna be interesting to see how many we've agreed on. We've agreed on two out of three so far. Well, that might come to an end, and you know what they say, don't you? Two out of three ain't bad, yeah, that is very true, yeah. Uh, Vestergaard, um, Jordan gave him five. I don't think he did much wrong. Um, I've, I've, I've stuck with a five to be honest with you. He was as solid as he always is. He does seem to make it look easy sometimes by just putting his foot in the way. I mean, he should have finished maybe with that header that he had on goal. Um, but he was, he was 
out of the two, I know you like to say give the two central defenders the same because they're very much sort of work in tangent with each other. But I did think Vestergaard had the better game. Uh, I've given him five as well. Yeah, um, I think he was good. Speaking of five, it's Man City five, Luton one. I don't know what's more surprise, uh, the scoreline or the fact that Luton scored one. Um, but yeah, I don't think Vestergaard did much wrong, a bit like a Madsen. Didn't really come under threat defensive-wise. Uh, made some good passes to spread the play. Vestergaard kind of did Vestergaard things, I guess, in that sense, Chris. Mm. I don't have to ooh, agree with you again and go for a five. Five, okay. Um, can we just say we're into stoppage time, so it's uh, McKenna time, as they say now. Um, yeah. Justin, five from Jordan. I wasn't really overly impressed. I've given him a four. I was less than impressed with him. Uh, I know I put I know I put JJ in my team, but I maybe did that with haste. I would actually probably put um, Doyle oh, yeah. in because he looks utterly useless. Compared to the JJ that came back after his long term injury, that's just gone. That JJ does not exist. He has gone, Chris. I don't know where, I don't know how, I don't know why, but he has. He cannot run past defenders. He doesn't want to run at teams. He doesn't like to adventure inside anymore. He got carved open on that left hand side for a couple of easier chances um, last mm -hmm. night as well. Could have caused us, could have cost us a goal. Uh, and he ended in, I'm giving him a three, mate. I was not impressed by JJ mm. at all. Um, well, you've gone three to my four. Uh, been put out of the misery. It's full time, by the way. Birmingham three, Coventry nil. Um, that's only full time at the moment. Uh, indeed, he who, of course, was taken off for Pratt. Um, five from Jordan. Wow. Um, I've just noticed a couple coming up, which I can't believe. But yeah, he gave me five. Unfortunately, I've got I've, I can't be that generous. And um, for um, Wilfred Indeedy, I've given him a, a definitely a not not Indeedy this time. I've given him a three. It's one I miss. It's it's, it's a three or a four, Chris. And we're probably going to say this a lot. Didn't do particularly too much wrong. But didn't do anything in just just in general. That's 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 yeah. the concerning part. Didn't take a couple of pop shots from outside the box. Didn't really make creativity. If he got annoyed, he gave away a pointless foul. Three, three, four. And I don't think he was bad. So I'm going to give him a four. But I just don't think he did anything great. If that makes sense, I'm going to give him a four. You going? Oh, you agreed with me for a moment there. And then you disagreed with me. Um, so at the moment, uh, it's still three agrees. Um, Harry Winks. Uh, for me, one of the worst games he's had for the club. Um, and I'm not, you know, when, when, when you've got your team performing around you like we are, then any player is going to struggle to, you know, unless you've got David Beckham and you, you, know, you can afford 10 people sleeping. Uh, Four from Jordan and a four from me. Definitely his worst game in a Leicester shirt. Um, screw you, Millwall, made it 3-1. Um, <laughs> definitely his worst performance. Couldn't pass. Was needlessly giving the ball either back to Plymouth or out of play. Just, just seemed off it. He just seemed... He seemed like somebody who had turned up to the shift with the flu mm. you know I, I appreciate the fact they tried to turn up but when we were looking around that when they were looking around that pitch chris for leaders he wasn't doing what he usually does he usually he'd turn up and be a leader i have to say there was a point that i forgot harry winks was still on the pitch uh and i'm going to be i'm going to be as critical as alan is quick to pick him as his easy man of the match at times I'm going to give him a three. I think Ooh. he was actually bad. I think he actually really was bad for us. Compared to what we're used to, Chris, he was really bad. 
fucking yeah. phone. Sit up. In the in the Millwall game, I mean, he was on a booking, so he kind of maybe he had to sort of step back a we'll little bit. Take him bit. off then. But, you know what I mean, that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, in that game, there was no there was no reason for it. He wasn't on a booking at all. Um, Birmingham three, Coventry nil. Hull what three, QPR nil. Preston nil, Norwich one, Swansea one, Rotherham nil at the full times at the moment. Um, Kieran Dewsbury Hall um, actually got a six off Jordan. Um, now, did he go to a different match? Because what you've just oh, said about him. I'm to have got a late goal. Oh, well, sorry. Um, that'll keep the pressure on Leeds, won't it? Mm. Um I, what you said about Wings, I'm saying about Kieran Jewsby Hall. I forgot he was on the pitch. I don't think I said his name in, in the commentary for about 15-odd minutes at one point. Jordan's gone six. I've gone three. Yeah, Jordan, mate. Take your blue tints off. Take your Jewsby Hall specs off. Try wearing a proper pair of glasses because he was absent. He's, again, I know, talk about it in the show. He's lost his drive to shoot from the edge of the box. He's lost his ambition, it seems, or diversity to want to take a player on. And and he's making so many indecisive decisions where he dawdles on the ball and then he goes, oh, now I'll pass it. Now yeah. I'll pass it left. Um, you know, and he's making decisions, del he's delaying decisions and it's costing us. I agree with you, Chris. I think he was awful, and 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 three, three. Oh, uh, number four there for us. Um, Bristol have conned themselves into getting a equaliser. One all. Dear, I'm having Absol a shoulder of a week in predictions. I'm telling you that now. <laughs> I can't remember what I put. I'm going to have a look afterwards. Fatawu. Um, now whether. His problem is that he, he set himself such high standards that when he fails to come up to that, it's disappointing. Uh, Jordan's given him a five. I've got to say, I don't know how he lasted the, or stayed on the pitch for 90-odd minutes. I really, really don't. Nothing came down that right-hand side, as we saw with the, 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 the graphs earlier uh, and the graphics. You know, there was nothing coming round uh, that at all. Uh, I've given him a three. An unusually quiet apt evening for Fatou. And even when we've not been that great, he's somehow found a way to try and spring us into life and create chances. I do not remember him creating the chances uh, at all. I don't remember him taking a shot on of any no. I don't remember him causing chaos on the right. And this is the problem we have had with wingers for a while, Chris. And it's it's probably the better of the two issues we've been having for wingers because we certainly have a very good, capable winger in, in Abdul. And, the, and if his loan agreement is what it's supposed to be, Chris, it's more vital now than ever that we get the uh, we get him we get promotion over the line. Mm. Uh, way it's which drew it's which drew la la la. Um, sorry, I just wanted to cheer that. Although Middlesbrough could have won the game because I had them to win it, but you know, I'll take the point anyway. Um, they, they've learned to double up on him, and when you double up on him, he, he struggles to get down the wing, he struggles to get down the byline, he struggles to get crosses in, he struggles to cut inside and, and get shots away. And we don't, we haven't figured a way how to, how to free him back up in them situations. Mm -hmm. The only way he gets freed up again on that right-hand side, Chris, is tired legs. And I think that's what created a few half chances on, on, on that side of things. Again, his recovery rate, maybe he's too eager to help out his teammates because sometimes he gave away some free kicks because he was throwing his body in when, when maybe FaZe or Ricardo could have dealt with it initially. He didn't have to go in there. I would give Fatawu a four. Oh, oh you're giving him more than me. Um, Not so, is it really? We'll go through all the scores obviously at the end of the show. Um, next up, it is uh, his counterpart on the left, and that is Mavadidi again. Uh, Jordan's gone a six. Oof. Um, I've 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 said that again, 
unimpressed with him. I've gone three. I've been, I, I, I've been waiting for this, Chris. And once I knew you were doing the white ratings, I, I waited to talk about Mavadidi. Can somebody tell me why last season, Harvey, last few seasons, Harvey Barnes was our scapegoat? He's this, he's crap, he's this, he doesn't score enough goals, he doesn't assist enough. And if he scored goals, oh, he's too greedy, you should be passing it. And when he was assisting enough, oh, he should take these chances on himself, he can't very odd. Right, why was he such a mediocre crap midfield uh, crap winger, and yet Mavadidi is the best thing since sliced toast? Now, I'm not saying Mavadidi is not a bad, because, not a good winger, no. but he always it, seems to get higher ratings than everybody else. Is it what I would call the Dakar effect? Well, I don't know, Chris, because I, I maybe, maybe because I would argue, right? And and look. He's shown he has got ability and talent to him, but so did Harvey Barnes, and that was apparently not good enough that he wasn't scoring 30 goals by the time he was out of diapers. Um, some Leicester fans weren't happy about it. Um, mm. But um, what I have to say, Chris, is everybody... I know everybody has knocked some performance of his when he's played bad, and we've done it as well, but the majority of fans are fairly happy with Mavadidi's goal contributions this season, Right? I'll ask these people the exact same thing. If I took away Mavadidi and I plastered the name Harvey Barnes, would you be saying the same? Would you be going, oh, well, Barnes has done all right this season. Sure, he's had a few back injuries really well. Now, I think you'd be slating Harvey Barnes. I don't understand why it's one rule for one, one exception for one. And, sorry, but um, a homegrown talent we're, we've been talking badly about there. He would be deemed having a crap season and not good enough. Yet Mavadidi, who's mid twenties by the way, he's not he's not a young kid. Not like Abdul, you can say well he's nineteen, twenty, he's still learning, fair enough. He's twenty five, twenty six, Mavadidi. He's played and trained at Arsenal, which is more than some people say they have a claim to have. Um but mm. um you know what I mean? Uh not good enough. If he's supposed to be miles above Barnes offering what he's doing for us, Chris, why isn't he finding a way to unlock defences? Because all they've all tell me if if I held up a picture and I've frozen my end, I know I have because my camera's just frozen. So let me know if you can I see can me. I can hear you. No, I can still hear oh, you, mate. Right, then. Yeah. Um I just want to know what's a diff if I held up a picture of Mavadidi being defended and Harvey Barnes being defended last season. I'd ask you to tell me the difference. You wouldn't be able to do it, Chris, for the pure reason is for the last eight weeks, all teams have done to put too many of a side of him and have someone man-marking the whole game, and he can't do nothing. Mm. Okay, okay, a little bit down to the same reason Abdul. They, they've clearly been told to, to not shoot anymore because shooting is foreboding. But, you know... The rest of it, I just wonder what's the difference with him. He gets a he gets a two from me. He was awful yesterday. Two. Oh wow, 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 wow. Okay. What's well, um, And names, names on a postcard. Comments down below. Whatever you need to be. Tell me one thing that my, my, uh, Steffi Mavadidi did that was of any I note. Think, I think Gray's answer, uh, put one thing forward, and he does occasionally switch it up. Well, so did Barnes. Barnes switched it up by driving into the box and taking shots on. Sorry, but did, no, no, did no, no, Barnes no, 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 never no, no. change at all? I I, I I agree with you. As I say, I went 3-3, three, three, you went 4-2. Two. two wingers got six points from us both, but in different ways. Now then, um, let me just see where my tin hat is. I mean, a man of the match performance from Pats and Dacca for me. Um, <laughs> you're still frozen. So I can't see whether you're laughing or sticking two fingers up at me. Um, uh, I'm bracing but... myself. <laughs> really? <laughs> that ain't going to happen, mate. Don't worry. Um, Jordan has given Dak a three. Now, anybody that watched last night's show, uh, and a few, few, pe few people have come on to me and said, why are you defending Dakar? You don't you don't kind of get my whole point at all, which is what both me and Brad have said today, is that neither of us are saying 
that he didn't have a good game. Uh, you know, he didn't have yeah, he didn't have a good bad you know, a good game, whatever. He was awful. But you've got to not just blame him. You know, there are there were twelve other players on that pitch at various times. You know, with substitutions that were also part of the team that lost. Um, Jordan Laxey has given him a three. Interestingly, here Daka from Gray has got a two. What do you think I've gone for, Brad? One. I have. I've gone. I've gone for one, one point for Pat and Dak. So I've actually put him down less than Gray has. Yeah, and I, I kind of get it. It's because as as much as we kind of make the argument and the point that um, you know he um, he wasn't given a service, that he wasn't you know, play to his strengths and he had the same problem as Vardy did when he came on. He wasn't afforded much time. Well, he wasn't afforded time. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. You know, he he wasn't, you know, given many touches or chances to really do it. When he did, Chris, unfortunately, in them, in them under the microscope moments, he... Ducking by. Absolute ducking by. He really was. And I, I got to sleep at about 2 o'clock this morning thinking of that, honestly, before you I asked. I was going to say. <laughs> it was, do you know, Chris, do you, do you know when we talk about Adiaki Ad, bad boy, right? Do you yeah. remember that harrowing performance against Liverpool? Uh, we ended up losing the game, I think, but Akinbai had four glorious chances that, that even... He, he got even Peggy off had could have been on the pitch and would have scored it. Do you remember it, Chris? It's one of the most harrowing replay to back him by his mm. tenure at Leicester. He had four, maybe even more, glorious, practically open goals and missed it. And Daki Bai um do I do I, do I complete the countdown? Look, as much as I defend it, when a striker gets a chance, he's got one job to do and he hasn't done it for weeks on end. I think he should be exactly where this number represents, Chris, and that's nowhere near the first team going into his last four games. It's a big fat zero for me. Zero. Whoa. Harsh. I mean, I gave him one for turning up. <laughs> I can't even get, well, I can't even give him that because he tried to turn up and miss the ball. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's true. He needs to be dropped for his own sanity, I think, as, as much as anything else. Um, right. We come on to... Um, Substitutions. Who is first up? Mr. Jamie Vardy coming on for the aforementioned Nulpois, um, Dakar. Um, Jordan gave him five. How? I, How the fuck did you give him five? I have no idea, mate. I have no idea. I love the fact I'm watching this. You know, when you watch the news and they say we're now going over to our reporter in, but they haven't got a live. Link and they just put a picture of him up there. Yeah, <laughs> that is exactly that is exactly how you look at the moment. I know, but fact, wait, I can see that version of me. Let Let me just say, I, I want I want to just try and quickly do something because this will amuse me if nobody else. Um, there we go. You've even got your display name now. <laughs> That's what they're nah, doing. No, I think I can do this because I'll let you have your moment and do that. No, oh, do that. no. Come on. That's not fair. Put yourself back. Put yourself back. Oh, they look better. I say they look better when you were back. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, but no, Jordan has given Jamie Vardy five. I really, really have no idea how. Um, when I look back, and I, I've got to go back onto the point I made, uh, three touches in over 20 minutes. And all this, well, he, you know, he didn't play to him or that. It was exactly the same for Dakar. Um, you know, so um, I've, I've given him a two, I'm afraid. I've given him slightly one more than, uh, than Dakar. You know, Chris, I used to at the start of this that I usually put my centre back parents on an even keel. Um, yes, I did. and usually I do. Unless there's yeah. something drastic like Vestergaard scores a goal or FaZe has a stinker, I usually yeah. keep them the same. But never fear, Chris. 
I'm going to keep that tradition going. Because what did Vardy offer us, Chris? Nothing. And again, hate to say it because I've said it. You've said it about one player. I've said it about one player. I'm going to say it again about Jamie Vardy. For God, he was on the pitch. Yeah. And whilst I'm giving a zero for Dakar for not taking chances... I'm going to give Vardy a zero because he didn't get any chances. And people can say he wasn't supplied. Talk fucking shit. It's his job to get the ball of his own accord. Push, push Harry Winks to the floor and take the ball off him like a kid at school if you want to, Jamie. Just fucking do something, mate. Because it weren't like you were on the pitch for three minutes. He was on the pitch from the 66th minute. And I'm pretty sure I only heard, I heard his name just as many times as he touched the ball three times. He was mm. god-awful. Deserves the rating he's getting. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> have, you been, have you been taking your um, your presenting skills off my attempt yesterday when I was talking about Dakar? <laughs> well, I just, you know what, Chris? It's like we've been saying, though. We'll rant and rave at one player, but when another yeah. player does just as bad, we won't. No, no, I'll rant and rave about Dakar, I'll rant and rave about Vardy, because... Yeah, if no, one no, no. can't take his chances and one's not having chances and, and, and doing nothing for us, what's the difference between them? Where, where, goal I don't know. Where, where did Jordan get five from? His arse. <laughs> that his tongue stuck up as well. I mean, if you want clueless and an idiot Hello, in one Jordan. sentence... How are you, doing? <laughs> you know, if you want clueless and, and brain-dead football analysis in one one name, it's Jordan Blackwell because the guy gives ratings the same way I can judge a gymnastics competition. I can't. <laughs> and the last player, let's move on. Uh, Dennis Pratt. Um, this is another one. Um, he came on, I'm not sure when he came on. It was quite late on though, wasn't it? Uh, well, say yeah. late, but later than Vardy. Uh, if my memory serves, or was it just before? I can't remember. Uh, but he came on for Indeedy. Um, and I think the fact that he made no difference says it all, really. You know, when when you when you replace a player, surely the idea, Brad, is that you are better than him. You know, you bring something that that player that you've got take gone off um wasn't able to. Um he actually got a six from Jordan. Me, Jordan, you got enough body parts to put up people's arses. <laughs> and his head and tongues up Jamie's. What's he got? Well, yeah, he must have the old Viagra in his leg up. Really... Look, a Pratt that falls into the... Didn't do anything spectacular, but didn't do anything wrong. And I can give him a few marks for trying, because at least he tried to get the ball forward and actually looked to try and take a shot on, unlike any other other midfielders. Uh, but I agree with you. When he came on for Wilford and Didi, I did feel that he, that he was going to bring a little bit of an impetus and a spark to it. And whilst he tried, he wasn't able to. Um, I'm I'm going to be sort of in between. I'm going to be a lot less arse licky than Jordan. And I'm going to be a lot more realistic, but a little bit more pos po positive with Dennis Pratt. Because I don't think he did anything bad, Chris. And I'm going to give him a four. You've given him a four. Well, um, so I, you didn't give me a chance to say what I'd given him, so I'll tell you now. Um, I gave I'm him a three. You. Wow. Again, threes, fours in this circumstance, Chris, very, very yeah. much alike, aren't they? Let's exactly. face it. Exactly. Uh, now, the interesting thing that we're going to finish on uh, is um, the manager. So... Um, on this, oops. <laughs> well, we'll leave it as that. We'll leave it as that because I obviously didn't load up uh, uh, Enzo's picture, uh, which isn't surprising because, I mean, Jordan doesn't rate the manager, as in he doesn't give him a rating. Um, we'll I probably do... give him an eight. <laughs> probably. Um, everything was wrong with that game. You know, we're, we're losing and he makes two substitutions. All right, you can argue that I don't want to make substitutions if there's no need to. Well, when you 1-0 down to a team that's fighting for relegation and you're top of the league and you're trying to get promoted, 
there's a need to make substitutions, and he didn't. And he's got no plan B. And I'm afraid for the manager, I give him a big fat zero. Can I, can I do a grey and can I give a minus 10? <laughs> I know I know you only gave a minus four, but can I go negative for Benzo? Because reactive substitutions didn't change a thing. Substitutes were like for like it didn't make enough changes. Mm. Was utterly useless. What did I call him yesterday, Chris? You you, you referred to Rogers as a, the clapping seal. Well, he was the he was a bold eagle, weren't he? Doing How it. Was it? Yeah. I've not seen me doing it, but I'm flapping my eyes. He's a bold eagle of footballing impetus because you know, nothing. So if if I can only go as low as zero than zero, but if I could go lower minus ten because it was dreadful man. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put you down as zero, but I'm gonna put minus ten in brackets. Um well that's another oh, we agreed right at the end. So we've actually agreed, Brad, on one, two, three, four. We've agreed on five, but I mean Ricardo five four, Justin four three, indeed he's three four, Winks four three, Pataru three four, Mavadidi three two, Daka one zero. I mean the, the the one we've, we've really got the furthest away from was Vardy because I gave him two, you gave him nil. Ah dear. By how similar our predictions were on uh, well, pre uh, our our ratings were. That's how I see it, mate. Well, yes, it's exactly. I mean, you know, they're not millions of. You know, I've I've not given six to somebody and you've given them a one, or you've given a three to somebody and I've given them a nine, <coughs> Daka. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to go that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where. I mean, all right, six was only his highest, but I don't know how. It's, it's still, it's still the higher point than, than anyone deserves. Mate, I mean, I give out. I think I give out what one or two vibes, and even then, I think I was just being generous. Well, I did say, didn't I, after I got uh, Hermanson and Ricardo got a five, I did say it wasn't going to get any better than that. And I'd forgotten that I'd also give a five, you know. But yeah. anyway, so quickly, very, very quickly, um, let's just have a run through uh, the, the, the just the results that affect us. Leeds nil, Blackburn one. Uh -huh. um, Ipswich one, Middlesbrough one. Uh, Southampton three, Watford two. So the table... Uh, first, Ipswich, 89. Second, Leicester, 88. Third, Leeds, 87. Fourth, Southampton, 81. What well, You would not have got... You'd have probably got 5,000 for one for predicting that about 10 weeks ago, wouldn't you? You certainly would have. Uh, from, from worryingly more from a Leicester's perspective than probably Ipswich and Leeds. But, uh, you know, ca carry on capitulating. That's what I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, mate... Somehow, you know, like you know, like a like a Scooby Doo villain, Leicester have got away with it, and, and it, you know, it hasn't been for them meddling kids. You know what I mean? Like Leeds yeah. have yet again outshone us. Anything we can do, they can do just as bad. And somehow, Chris, despite probably one of the worst runs that Leicester have had this season, but it is the worst runs we've had for um, this season. Leicester are still in the automatic zones, and even more. Offering, Chris, somehow, all right, we've still got a game to go before we do it, but we could play Southampton and still go top with our game in hand. How mm. this has worked out, I mean, six games, Chris, the top three have played two, two of each, one goal scored, and that was coincidentally today when it was which Nick uh, got themselves a point. It's It shows you how funny this game of football really can be. Yeah, I'm just totaling up their points here. Um, six, seven, eight, Southampton, one, two, five. No, that was yeah. Did Southampton beat Coventry? I can't remember, mate. No, nor can I. I. I, Somebody... I, know Coventry, I know Coventry beat Leeds. No, sorry, I thought I'd mention the fact that they beat Leeds again. No, I don't. I don't blame you for mentioning it at all. all right, let me just very, very quickly uh, just have a look what Southampton did. Um, I think they did, didn't they? Yes, yes, they did. Because um, Leeds beat, uh, Coventry beat Leeds, and then lost to Southampton. I think. I think. They, I think Leeds, uh, Southampton beat them 
three one. Um, two one. Yes, it was two one. I, I, I pull it. I put. I put the wrong color down. I was having a, a color blind moment. So um, three, six, nine, eleven. Since we have done the, the this the, the last um, five games, um, Southampton have actually got eleven points. Yeah. Ipswich have got eight. We've got six. Leeds have got five. And yet Leicester are only off the top by a point and mm. could go top on their gap. Yes, just it's still you the more you say it, the crazy it sounds. If you'd have told Leicester fans six weeks ago that yeah. Leicester were gonna capitulate and only win two out of six, the probable response would have been, Oh, well, it won't cost us that much because I'm sure Leeds and Ipswich will drop points. But <laughs> It's just these last four weeks, Chris, you could say, oh, God, we'll be out of the automatic zone. Somehow, somehow we're not. And and that, and that is something that needs to come to an end, that we're sat here saying, somehow, I want to be sat here, please, for the love of my Father up above in God, as I say, because of the Jesus quotes that I get. Somehow, please, can we not balls it up against West Brom at home? Yes. Which I Can think is going to be our to most weekend game. Actually, You know what I mean, Chris? I want to get to a weekend, Chris, where we win and Leeds still bottle it. So we actually go into that Southampton game. Yeah. Um, as it said here from you, un Untitled, are you going to church this Sunday, like you said, if both Dream Drop teams drop points today? <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Untitled. Uh, Brad, tell us all about Leicester Till I Die TV too. Leicester Till I Die TV 2 is the home of Leicester City Football Quizzes and the Leicester City WSL's women's side, who, if you lovely folks want to join me at Checks Notes Forgets to Write Down Time, I believe it's, um, I will double check with it, but join me tomorrow afternoon, and the only, re the only way you'll know is, because I'm going to set the show up later on today, is by subscribing to LTI TV 2, because the Leicester women, right, they have something that Leicester men can't play for, uh, and that is silverware. They are taking down Tottenham Hotspur in the WSL FA Cup. Leicester women looking to make history. Um, is it 12 o'clock kickoff, to... by the way? Sorry, Brad. Just they, what was that, Chris? 12 o'clock kickoff. So 12 o'clock, so join me at about quarter past uh, 11 once I've got the team up, team team news in and everything else. So I'll be fashionably late to me and watch along. But no, <laughs> go and join us for it because it is a semi-final. Leicester's uh, first chance to make an FA Cup final and a chance to end what has been a relatively good season in terms of performances and results on the pitch uh, into a uh, silverware defining season. They could get to Wembley for the first time and who knows, Hopefully, if they do beat Tottenham, it won't take them five attempts to win it at the final hurdle. But that's yeah. where you can find me on LCI TV too. You'll find me there at about quarter past 11. He says apprehensively, saying it might be more half 11. I'd make exactly. it half 11, everybody. Yeah. But make sure yeah. you are subscribed over to that channel and you turn notifications on and go and check out our, our Leicester City quiz that's over there as well. Um, I'm going to speak to Dave uh, about getting him on during next week so yeah go and check us out the search L -T -I -D that, L you go, I'm, I'm getting stuck now ltid tv2 there we go yes do yes. the same as this but just stick a two at the end instead of a one uh brad stay on for two minutes because i just want to have a, a quick chat with you um and uh but thank you very much and i will see you next week i'll see you next week sir. i'll see you i'll see you then take care buddy um, bye everybody bye bye Thanks to Brad there, um, who talks so much more sense when it comes to tactics than I do. I am very much just the fan. Now, why doesn't he boot A to B, you know? And um, Brad will explain, well, it's got to go via the M62 and all this. So he knows his stuff. But thanks to Brad and thanks to everybody that's been in the in the chat today. Gray for modding it. Really, really appreciate that, Gray. Um, we do have a position available. So if you want to become a mod, message me on Twitter. Uh, at Leicester TID, uh, or just search Leicester uh, LTID. 
uh, TV. We do have a, a mod position available now. Um, I've just got to leave you very, very quickly um, with this. Coming up next on Leicester Till I Die TV. Half 11 tomorrow, you've just heard it on LTID TV 2, and then back here on LTID TV 1, uh, 7 o'clock Monday night, uh, we're going to do the Le Let's Talk Leicester show, the debate show from Leicester Till I Die. Enzo Striker Dilemma, we'll be carrying on with the Striker Talk. But look, say thank you so very, very much to everybody that's been on. Really do appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much for the uh, super sticker. That does mean a lot as well. Um, look, uh, we said this a couple of times, and I don't know how much longer we're going to get away with saying this. Not a good weekend, but my God, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, thanks very much, guys. If you've been listening via your favorite podcast uh, platform, it's been a long one, but thank you for sticking with us as well. Uh, and we'll see you soon. All the best. Have a good uh, rest, a good rest of the weekend. It feels like Sunday, but it's only Saturday. Take care and enjoy what's left of it. Thanks for watching. These videos are tremendous. You'd better like them too, or I'll be back. The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die, independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network.